We have all become socialized to believe that the medical doctor knows what's best for us. They don't know. They only know what they've been trained in. And they have had no training in medical nutrition. So you should not listen to a word that comes out of their mouth unless they're talking about drugs or surgery because that is their thing. Nutrition is our thing. You can be a healthy vegetarian. You can be a healthy vegan. You can be a healthy lacto-ovo. You can be a healthy carnivore as long as you are not consuming 10 foods. Now we might add the food or two to the list as we go on in life, but there are 10 foods that everybody should stop eating immediately that need to pass no buddy's lips. Wheat, barley, rye, and oats, oil in a bottle, fried food, meat that's cooked, well done, meat that has nitrates added as preservatives, the skins of baked potatoes, yams, and sweet potatoes, and any carbonated beverage with a meal. In the early 1900s, it was a relatively level playing field between the chiropractors, the osteopaths, the homeopaths, and the MDs. In 1915, 1920, there was something called the Flexner Report. Carnegie Corporation funded this man named Abraham Flexner. He went all around the country. He went on stagecoach and train and horseback. This was before the interstate highway system. It took Flexner five years to do this. He went all around the country and did an inventory of all of the medical schools that prescribed drugs. He brought the list back to the Carnegie's, who owned drug companies, and then the Carnegie's and the Rockefeller's gave millions of dollars of free money to the medical schools and hospitals in the United States that were prescribing drugs. That was the beginning of the end. After the Flexner report, there was no more level playing field in the United States. And the MDs started a juggernaut that's taken off. Most people in the United States think that the predominant medicine here, MD-directed pharmaceutical medicine, we think that those guys are top dog. It may interest you to know that arthritis is a perfect example of Latin doctor talk designed to make you, the patient, feel intellectually inferior. Arthritis is Latin for inflammation in the joint right? So what do you do? You've got inflammation in your joints. You know that you've got inflammation in your joints. You know that you've got pain in the joints. You run to the MD's office because it's the only medicine that's legally allowed to be practiced in your state that your medical insurance pays for. It's the only medicine they've taught you about. It's the only medicine you know anything about. And the MD does $3,000 of diagnostic discovery and tells you that you have arthritis, which is Latin for inflammation of the joint. You already knew that before you went into their office and then they're more than happy to give you medications the intention of which is not to cure the arthritis the intention of which is to manage your symptoms nobody owns the field of medicine there are different disciplines of medical science each of which have their own strengths and weaknesses. There's the naturopathic piece. There's the MD piece. Your medical doctor does not practice medicine. They practice allopathic medicine. Nobody practices medicine. Medicine is a vast domain of which there are many pieces, right? There's the chiropractic piece, the traditional Chinese medical piece, acupuncture, Ayurveda, lots of different types of medicine, lots of different medical disciplines. And in the final analysis, if if we drill this down a little bit more, all of the different types of medicine fall into two philosophical camps, the holistic camp and the reductionistic camp. Interestingly, the only people in the reductionistic camp are the MDs. Nurses are also trained in reductionism. Every other medical discipline in the world espouses the holistic method. I'm often criticized for being too harsh on the MDs and for having MD bashing sessions, and that's not what this is. This is about perspective on the delivery of medicine all around the world so that you can understand whom you should bring your body to for the best possible outcome. We don't have this type of education, this type of knowledge, this type of understanding, because for the last 100 years, all that we've known about is MD-directed medicine. So drugs and surgery are wonderful when they're applied efficiently and effectively. And in fact, that is the domain of the MD. The MD is best trained for surgery when it's absolutely necessary. A handful of infectious diseases and trauma care. But when we let the MDs start to get their hands on an arthritic condition or a bone and a joint condition, it's bad. While we have given ourselves over exclusively to the care of the MDs in the United States, 46 million adults have some form of arthritis. By 2030, 67 million Americans aged 18 or older. I bet you thought arthritis was a geriatric illness. Not so much. By 2030, 67 million Americans are projected to have some type of arthritis. Two-thirds 
Here's a startling statistic. Two-thirds of the people that have arthritis are under the age of 65. This is an interesting pitch. You will read this all the time, by the way. Front page of USA Today, front page of the Wall Street Journal, front page of the New York Times, right? In 2003, arthritis cost the U.S. economy $128 billion. Well, that's correct. Orthopedic doctors made a killing this year. They profited $128 billion on the backs of your suffering. Good to be an orthopedic doctor. You never hear it pitched to you that way. Even if you own a thousand acres of the most organic farmland on the planet, you grow your own vegetables, you grow your own fruits, you grow your own nut trees, you grow your own livestock, your own chickens, and you only eat the stuff that's grown on your organic farm, you will still be nutritionally deficient. There are 90 essential nutrients that your body needs. 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two essential fatty acids. These nutrients are not present in the food. They are not there. If you are a vegetarian, if you are a vegan, if you are a carnivore, you must stop eating wheat, barley, rye, and oats, oil in a bottle, and anything fried. Yes, that includes stir-fried anything. And you must supplement your diet with the 90 essential nutrients appropriate for your body weight. If you do not do these things, it is only a matter of time until your body runs out of an essential nutrient and then things start to break. While we have given ourselves over to exclusive disease management by the allopathically trained MDs. The arthritic statistics have not budged. Actually, more and more and more people are getting arthritis. Arthritis is not genetic. And anybody that's told you arthritis has genetic roots, if they're a medical professional, should have their medical license revoked. It's the second most frequently reported chronic condition in the United States, and this, I'm assuming, is not any different in any other industrialized nation. Now, the MDs are trained to believe that your body does not have the ability to fix itself, that once you're sick, you're screwed, and your only option is to let the MD manage your symptoms with drugs until they get so bad that you need surgery. This is the philosophical orientation which informs all of the MD's treatments. I mean, think about heartburn. Does your medical doctor not know how to cure heartburn? No. They know how to manage heartburn with the little purple pill, but they can't cure it. The cause of gastroparesis is damage to the vagus nerve. The cause of gastroparesis is unknown. How can these two things be both true? It's this type of double talk, which is rampant in conventional medicine in the 21st century. What they mean to say here on WebMD, in which their editors somehow drop the ball on, is that conventional medical doctors, conventional medical science is clueless as to what causes gastroparesis. So sometimes, there are things that we know for sure can cause it. For instance, if you have a bullet in your abdomen and it grazed the vagus nerve, well then that could be the cause of gastroparesis, notwithstanding trauma to your central nervous system. The operative cause behind the genesis of this condition is unknown to conventional medical doctors, which should not surprise us because conventional medical doctors don't even know what causes heartburn. Does your medical doctor not know how to cure heartburn? No. They know how to manage heartburn with the little purple pill, but they can't cure it, nor can they cure any chronic disease. It's not the job of the MD to cure it, nor is it the job of the MD to understand what's causing the illness. It's the job of the MD to manage your symptoms with drugs until it's so bad that you need an operation. Bad for you, good for them. This data just released by Medicare. They listed the salaries of all of the different physicians in the United States, the money that they pay different physicians in the United States. At the top of the food chain, orthopedic surgeon. The annual salary in the United States, if you're an orthopedic doctor doing knee replacement, joint replacement surgery, 475, it's half a million bucks. It's good to be a joint repair specialist. Good for their pocketbook, not so good for you. For the past 100 years in industrialized nations around the world, medicine has been monopolized by one facet of medicine, the MDs. We do not have a free medical market. The only medicine that your insurance pays for in most states, the only medicine that's practiced in your hospitals, the only medicine that universities do research on, the only medicine that they make TV shows about is MD-directed medicine. And we have become socialized to believe that the MDs own the secret decoder ring to all 
things medical, that they are the exclusive gatekeepers to medicine and everybody else is a back of the bus quack with substandard treatment. It's just not true. Often just the opposite. There are many different types of arthritis. Now remember, the MDs are excellent at naming and categorizing things, but they're horrible at figuring out how to fix them. So over the last hundred years, they have categorized many different types of the arthritic condition. There's rheumatoid arthritis, where they tell you your body's developed antibodies against itself, which is nonsense. They'll tell you there's psoriatic arthritis, there's traumatic arthritis, there's degenerative osteoarthritis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they're correct. You can categorize and subcategorize and delineate and draw parameters around this presentation of the illness and this presentation of the illness ad infinitum. The only medical practitioner probably that's allowed to practice legally in your state, probably that is the only medical practitioner your insurance will pay for is an MD. And your medical doctor has no training, no experience, no respect, and no appreciation for medical nutrition. So what is your medical doctor going to do? They're going to throw a drug at the problem, not to cure it, but to manage the symptoms. And so you start the slow spiral into bad health, higher and higher in medical bills, more and more ineffective medical treatments and then you die but before you die you go bankrupt all because you thought you were doing the right thing by being a vegetarian you thought you were doing the right thing by being a vegan and you were halfway there you were not eating certain foods that had net negative effects on the health of your body that's a good thing but you were eating into into the bargain lots of wheat and lots of barley lots of rye lots of oats lots of oil in a bottle fresh organic triple virgin olive oil and it was slowly killing you they have no earthly idea about what causes arthritis. None whatsoever. It's not their thing to understand that. It's their thing to deliver drugs to manage the symptoms. Now look, I can prescribe drugs. I'm not against drugs. Thank God for Novocaine. Thank God for morphine. Thank God for penicillin. It's not the drug, it's how it's used. It's not the gun, it's how it's used. The way that MDs use drugs, it's the leading cause of death in the United States. So when you present your body to a MD with an, any type of a bone or a joint issue, the MD's treatment protocol is that they'll give you anti-inflammatory meds and pain meds. Then they'll give you surgery. Then they'll give you more pain meds, more anti-inflammatory meds, and then they give you more surgery. I've had patients that have had four different knee operations on the same knee. All you have to do is follow the money. $128 billion a year is given to the MDs who treat arthritis. When your chromosomal material is affected by nutritional stress. So you don't have enough zinc in your body, you get a break. You don't have enough selenium, you get a malfunction. You don't have enough folate acid it gets weak and it doesn't express itself when it tries to replicate who knows we do know that there are direct causal relationships not indirect direct causal relationships between unhealthy chromosomes and not enough nutrients so if you're neutrified you look like this all your chromosomes are pumping out information with all the inks in the printer if you don't have enough nutrition in, in your body the chromosomes are funky and you look like this you have an autistic child it's not because you had a bad gene it's because you had a broken chromosome you didn't have a bad gene you had a bad doctor your medical doctor your obstetrician has no training no experience no respect and no appreciation for nutrition they don't even know what a vitamin is you want to watch a medical doctor's head explode? Ask him what a vitamin is. Doctor, what's a vitamin? How many essential nutrients are there, doctor? Holistic medicine argues that the human body knows how to fix itself, the human body wants to fix itself, and it's the holistic physician's sacred duty to prescribe treatments which assist in that process, support and promote the body's built-in, God-given ability to fix itself. There's also a fundamental belief inside of naturopathic medicine that the human body is inhabited by a spiritual force, a soul presence. This is not a religious conversation this is a spiritual conversation we believe that human beings are spiritual entities having a physical experience that there is an intimate relationship between the mind the body and the spirit and naturopathic medical therapeutics take all of this into consideration this is a cross-section of your spine the white stuff in this drawing is the bones your backbones the stuff the chiropractors adjust we love chiropractors by the way the red tissue here is the cartilage cushion between the joints between the bones and the black green and purple stuff is the nerve when you're healthy the red colored discs they're not really red in life but for artistic expression right they're red the, those discs are like feather pillows and they're chock full of feathers but as you go down the road of life 
if you're not consuming the right nutrients, the bones and the discs run out of structural integrity because you've stopped feeding them. So what's going to happen when the disc loses its structural integrity? The weight of your body is going to make it squish. It's going to flatten out like a pancake and then it's going to touch the nerve that it should be protecting. You know what that translates to? Ouch! Pain, baby! And then some more pain. But the MDs have no earthly understanding about what causes this. Why? $128 billion a year is given to the MDs who treat arthritis, but they don't have any intention, know-how, knowledge, or understanding of how to cure it. It's good to be an orthopedic surgeon. When all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. When all you have is an ax, all you want to do is cut things down. We need perspective, ladies and gentlemen, because we do not have any. We are up against it hard. The statistics are startling. The arthritic condition is getting worse, and it starts in the teenage years. And if we don't do something about it, well, that's why we're here, to do something about it. There are 10 foods that everybody should stop eating immediately. Wheat, barley, rye, and oats, oil in a bottle, fried food, meat that's cooked, well done, meat that has nitrates added as preservatives, the skins of baked potatoes, yams, and sweet potatoes, and any carbonated beverage with a meal. As long as you are not eating these foods, you can pursue whichever dietary discipline fits your needs. If you are inclined to become a vegetarian because of spiritual practice, then fine. If you want to be a vegan because you have a good heart and you want to help the planet and you can't think of hurting an animal, and you really just don't want to go there, then fine. If you want to be a carnivore, you can be a carnivore as long as you don't eat meat that has nitrates added or meat that's cooked well done and don't fry anything. As long as we eliminate these 10 foods, no matter what your dietary discipline is, you can expect to live a long and healthy life. With my MD colleagues, cousin. It's all about research and double blind this and double blind that and let's prove it with some type of double blinded placebo controlled clinical study, right? Well, that's only good as long as it doesn't go against the grain. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association in July 2002, that knee replacement surgery for osteoarthritis doesn't work. This was published. It doesn't work. It's a temporary fix at best. Now, if you don't believe me, just ask yourself, how many people do you know that have a, a prosthetic knee, a prosthetic hip, a prosthetic shoulder who feel great three years, four years after the surgery? How are they doing? Not that great. Because joint replacement does not fix the cause of the illness, period. Joint replacement for most types of arthritis is like painting over the mold in the basement without addressing the cause of the mold. Good job, boys. Let's go home and buy a Porsche. Doctor, the third leading cause of death in the United States, heart related or cancer or diabetes, things like that. Can you clue us into what that is and why? Third leading cause of death as published in the Journal of the American Medical Association is MD directed treatments. This means you go to a medical doctor, an MD, he gives you a treatment and you die from it. According to the United States Department of Health and Human Services, 15,000, 15,000 Medicare patients a month are killed by MD treatment. Nobody goes to jail. 3,500 people die and we go to war. But 15,000 people a month are killed by medical doctor treatment and we don't bat an eyelash. This is because we have been, for the last 100 years, led into this false belief that the medical doctor is king and knows everything about everything. And really, you need to just shut up and follow your medical doctor's advice. Most people in the United States have no idea at all of the history of the evolution of medicine in the United States. Nutrify the joints. Feed the body the nutrition that the joints need to maintain their structural integrity. Remove inflammatory agents from the diet. Most, if not all, inflammatory agents that enter the body enter through your food and drink, which is scientific jargon for you're eating stuff that's causing inflammation and you don't even know it, you need to stop it. There are foods which, if you eat them, cause inflammation. And if you have any type of an itis anywhere in your body, the consumption of these foods will promote inflammation. It's like rubbing salt into a wound, and it's not a good idea. Our therapeutics are designed to support and promote the body's ability to fix itself.
Your medical doctor may be the nicest person God ever created, but your medical doctor is not trained how to cure a disease. Your medical doctor does not practice health care. If they did, your health would be getting better. Your medical doctor practices disease management. We need to call a spade a spade. It's not health care. It's disease management. Sometimes disease management is just what the doctor ordered, but not when it comes to type 2 diabetes. You have been played. Naturopathic physicians have an understanding of the operative cause of type 2 diabetes. Diabetes, and we've known this since 1957. You want to learn what naturopathic doctors do to attempt to cure type 2 diabetes? To attempt to cure anything? Visit glidden.healthcare, glidden.healthcare, and educate yourself about the undiscovered country of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition. We are helping hundreds of thousands of people all around the world to recover their health by supplying their body with the raw materials that it needs in order to fix itself. Arthritis is a nutritional deficiency disease. You don't have arthritis because you have a bad gene. You don't have arthritis because you have a voodoo curse. You don't have arthritis because the aging process. You have a bad joint because you have a bad doctor. It's that simple. $25 million of federally funded research done by my mentor, colleague, and friend, Dr. Joel Wallach, the founder of the Longevity Company, prove that there are 90 essential nutrients that the human body needs in order to function the way that God intended it to. Here's the breakdown. 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two essential fatty acids for a grand total of 90 nutrients. By the way, a nutrient is considered essential if the body needs it but can't make it. Cholesterol is very, very, very important for your health. That's right, I said important. Cholesterol is your friend, but it's not an essential nutrient because the body can make it. Cholesterol is so important to your health, your body makes it. As God is my witness, you would not believe the things that I've seen people recover from in holistic medicine. The body's ability to fix itself is remarkable. Most of the time, all that the body needs to do that is the raw materials that it needs to do that. And we need to stop eating food that's hurting the body. You know, if you put diesel fuel in an unleaded engine, even if it's a brand new Ferrari, it's gonna run like crap if it runs at all. There's nothing wrong with the car, it just had the wrong fuel. It's the same with the human body. You give the human body the raw materials that it needs, clean up the diet, Superman. And you know, if you don't get the super status, then at least your blood pressure normalizes, at least your arthritis goes away, at least your anxiety and panic attacks go away, and you can sleep through the night. Gastroparesis, a much misunderstood condition wreaking havoc with millions of people's lives while conventional medical doctors are clueless as to the cause and the cure. My people are destroyed by lack of knowledge. According to WebMD, gastroparesis is a condition in which your stomach cannot empty itself of food in a normal fashion. They say it is caused by damage to the vagus nerve, which regulates the digestive system. A damaged vagus nerve prevents the muscles in the stomach and intestine from functioning, preventing food from moving through the digestive system properly. Well, that makes sense, but then they also go on to say often the cause of gastroparesis is unknown. How can can these two things be both true? The cause of gastroparesis is damage to the vagus nerve. The cause of gastroparesis is unknown. Vegetarianism, veganism, carnivorism, a lot of controversy always has been a lot of controversy surrounding these subjects because there's only a handful of physicians in the world who are trained and have any type of a clinical experience in medical nutrition. MDs are completely out of the loop here. Your medical doctor may be the nicest person God ever created, but your medical doctor doesn't know anything about medical nutrition. Somebody sent me a clip of Dr. Oz a few weeks ago, and Dr. Oz was espousing the benefits of vegetarianism, and he said that he knew a lot about vegetarianism because his wife was a vegetarian. Well, that speaks to the hubris which is inherent in the conventional medical profession. Medical doctors have no problem whatsoever speaking at length about subjects that they have no training and no clinical experience in. You wouldn't take the word of a chiropractor about uh, pharmaceuticals because they have no training and no clinical experience with it. Well, a chiropractor's wife may have taken a pharmaceuticals. Does that give the chiropractor license to talk about it? No. There is one more thing you need to do. You need to add into your diet. You need to supplement your diet with 90 essential nutrients. 16 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two essential fatty acids. These nutrients are the staff of life and they are not present in the food that you're eating regardless of your dietary 
leaning. If you are eliminating meat, you're going to be eliminating certain amino acids and certain vitamins from your diet. If you are eating meat, there's going to be extracurricular stress to your body that your body is going to need extra nutrients in order to deal with. It's not so much what you eat. It's what you don't eat and what you are absorbing and the nutrient status of the food that you're eating. MD directed pharmaceutical medicine. We think that those guys are top dog because their therapeutics are better than the homeopaths or the naturopaths or the chiropractors. It's not. They're in the driver's seat because of political and financial coalitions that were built at the turn of the century that most people have no idea of at all. It's crazy, right? It's the third leading cause of death. And yet, when the government makes noise about mess with people's insurance, everybody freaks out. What is medical insurance? When you buy medical insurance, what are you doing? You're betting that you're going to get so sick, you will not be able to afford it. So you pay good money every month to gain access to a system of medicine that's the third leading cause of death in the United States. We need our heads examined. That's why we give Dr. Wallach and myself collectively, we give 400 free lectures a year. And we're building a grassroots network because people don't know this. People I come to my lectures and they look at me and say, couch potatoes live longer? Medical doctors are the third leading cause of death? You know, what's going on here? Conventional medical doctors don't even know what causes heartburn. If they don't know what causes heartburn, they're unable to cure heartburn. Conventional medical doctors can manage heartburn, but they can't cure it. Can manage high blood pressure, but they can't cure it. Can manage arthritis, but they can't cure it. Well, it should come as no surprise that conventional medical doctors who hold themselves out as the alpha and the omega of all things medical are clueless as to the generative cause of gastroparesis. On the one hand, well, it might be linked to hormones. On the next hand, oh, it's probably genetic. Oh no, maybe it's caused by a virus. Oh no, 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 I know what it is. It's an autoimmune disease. Oh no, 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 it's related to obesity. It's related to a negative reaction to prescription medication. It's a diabetic side effect. All of these things have been related historically to the genesis of gastroparesis, but these things are not the cause. From the holistic point of view, all of these conditions are different arms of the same octopus. Diabetes does not cause gastroparesis. Viral infections, autoimmune diseases do not cause gastroparesis. Gastroparesis and so-called autoimmunity and the diabetic condition and blood sugar abnormalities and obesity are all caused by the same thing. They're all arms of the same octopus, but the medical doctors completely got it wrong. It's quite frustrating. From the proper perspective, everything makes sense. So taking your body suffering from gastroparesis to a medical doctor, office is like taking an automobile that doesn't start anymore. You can't start it to an automobile mechanic. The automobile mechanic does $5,000 worth of testing and says, you know what? Your car won't start, but they give it a Latin name. Automobilius won't start us. That'll be $5,000, please. This is what we've gotten used to, regretfully. 90 essential nutrients are necessary for health, but your body can't make them. So they must be imported into the body every day. The only problem is, and it's a big problem. It is an overlooked problem that nobody sees. It is impossible to get all 90 essential nutrients from food. You can't do it. It's not just tricky. It's not just challenging. It's impossible. And here's why. 90 essential nutrients. The lion's share are minerals. Two-thirds of your nutrient needs are minerals. Things like calcium, magnesium, sulfur, zinc, selenium. Only problem with minerals is the only person that can make a mineral is God. Plants can't make minerals. Animals can't make minerals. If a plant could make a mineral, we could bioengineer carrots to make gold and we'd all be rich. Minerals are found in the soil or not. Here's a map of a very important mineral for human health, selenium, in the U.S. The pinkish and reddish colors, that's a lot of selenium there. There's white, there is no selenium at all. This is just one mineral out of 60. ND stands for naturopathic doctor. The doctoral degree in naturopathic medicine is a primary care, fully licensed, fully regulated medical discipline. In order to become a naturopathic doctor, you have to complete your pre-med degree, pre-med biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, calculus, etc., the same way you do as a conventional medical doctor. You have to then go to a naturopathic medical school. There are currently four naturopathic medical schools which are accredited by the United States Department of Education in the United States and one in Canada. 
You have to do four years of naturopathic medical school, which includes about 900 hours of clinical supervision. Then once you complete your degree, you have to sit for and pass state boards, national boards. And once you have a license in one of the 18 states, which licenses and regulates naturopathic medicine, then you have to pursue a great many hours of continuing education credit. You're a medical doctor by virtue of their training in allopathic medicine, which is grounded in reductionistic medical philosophy, believes that the body is basically a bag of biochemicals waiting to break, and it is not the MD's job to cure anything. Now, think it through. Of the thousands of prescription medications, the only ones that can cure anything are antibiotics, right? And even those are beginning to fail us. That, by the way, is the next medical tsunami to hit the world. Anti antibiotic resistant infectious diseases. I want you to think this through. To the medical profession that doesn't even know how to cure heartburn, right? Your medical doctor, bless his or her heart, can only manage heartburn. They do not know how to cure even heartburn. To the medical profession that does not know how to cure heartburn, we've given nearly a trillion dollars to come up with a cure for cancer. No wonder we're in such a bad situation when it comes to cancer treatment. Holism argues that the body is a complex system of interrelated parts, that the body is inhabited by a spiritual presence. The spiritual presence brings intelligence to play. The body knows how to fix itself. The body wants to fix itself. The body is attempting to fix itself. By the way, our bodies are so intelligent that they grew themselves all by themselves from a single-celled organism into us. Our bodies are taking care of business right now outside of our conscious control. Millions of biochemical things are happening in your body right now completely beyond your control all of these things are taken care of by the innate inherent god-given intelligence of the body and it is the sacred duty of the holistic physician to deliver therapeutics unto the sick the intention of which are to support and promote the body's built-in ability to fix itself to attempt to cure the condition and by the way, we don't treat the disease, we treat the person. The treatments are never delivered to the disease. Dr. Wallach set Longevity up on purpose as a networked marketing company in order to grow a grassroots coalition. So I tell you, you tell somebody, they tell somebody, that's how it goes. Worked pretty good for the church, by the way, all word of mouth. If you're feeling a little deficient in vitamin M, if there's more rent left at the end of the month than there is money, then we can help. You can join Longevity as a business builder and as a member member of Longevity, we will pay you to promote our message of health recovery. And that beats a poke in the eye with a sharp stick, because what are you doing? You're helping people to have a better quality of life with science-based, clinically verified, pragmatic and effective treatments that actually work. You show what we're up to, to any and all. And then you got other people who wanna help you and build the business. And by actually helping people to have a better quality of life, if you help us spread our message, there is no limit to how many people you can help. And remember, armies need to be paid. On the one hand, 89.7%, which is misleading on purpose, I believe. The real numbers, 29%, which means 71% of women who were diagnosed with breast cancer are dead within five years of treatment. By the way, the National Cancer Institute, the American Cancer Society, about 15 years ago stopped using the word cancer cure. And in order to validate their treatments, they came up with this five-year survivorship thing, right? So nobody in conventional medicine talks about curing cancer anymore. They talk about how many people who have cancer are still going to be alive after five years of the diagnosis. However, what they don't tell you is that inside of this five-year survival ship schemata, the disease may or may not have come back. So they got cancer, they were treated for cancer, five years later they're still alive, but in order to be included in this statistical analysis, even if the cancer came back, they're put into the mix, which seems to me to be entirely misleading. One of the secrets to our success is not only the recipes, but the dosage. Now, does a tank need more oil than a Volkswagen? Yes, it does. Does somebody who's 300 pounds need more glucosamine sulfate and more calcium and more vitamin A than somebody who's 95 pounds? Yes, they do. So we have developed 
Foundation Medical Nutrition Boilerplate Health Recovery Protocol, which are dose based on your weight. Now, you don't need to worry about doing all the math. If somebody's brought you here tonight and the information that I've given you has piqued your curiosity and you want to get started, they know how many bottles you need based upon your body weight because it's easy math. But the point that I want to make here right now is one of the reasons that we get such unbelievably remarkable success here is because we're the only ones in the world that dose medical nutrition health recovery strategies based upon your body weight. It's a very important distinction. Yeah, 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 genes, you know, it's all human ailments are caused by bad genes. This is the latest scapegoat. And quite frankly, I ain't buying it. I ain't drinking that Kool-Aid. Neither should you. That type of medical thought is the wrong dog for the hunt. We need a different dog for the hunt. We need a educated, open-minded, science-based, clinically verified understanding of what's going on. Now look, if you want to wait 50 years for some billionaire to fund some holistic clinic to, to get a handle on this and just dial it all in for you specifically, be my guest. In the meantime, however, if I were you, I would advise you to take Dr. Wallach's lead because we know quite a bit already about the relationship between nutrition and the health of the human body. And the fundamental foundation holistic message here is the human body knows how to fix itself, wants to fix itself. The human body is attempting to repair itself even on a chromosomal genetic level. The body is attempting to repair itself all of the time. Medical doctors own one piece of the pie of medical science. There are a lot of pieces of the pie. There's the MD piece, the chiropractic piece, the traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, Ayurvedic, the oldest system of medicine on planet Earth, and the nature paths. But the pharmaceutical industry and the American Medical Association would have you believe the only people who really practice medicine have MD after their name. This is why we are in such a pickle. Of the thousands of prescription medications which are currently available, the only ones that cure anything are antibiotics, and those are starting to fail us. Medical doctors, bless their hearts, don't even know how to cure heartburn. They can manage it with the little purple pill, but they can't cure it. They can't cure blood pressure. They can't cure arthritis. They can't cure anything, but they can manage it, but because don't know these distinctions and we are existing in the middle of a medical monopoly, things start to disintegrate. Reductionistic medical philosophy is practiced by the allopathically trained MDs only. Every other medical profession in the world, chiropractors, naturopaths, homeopaths, acupuncturists, traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, etc., etc., herbalists, everybody else except our friends the MDs practice holism. And holism argues the body is a system of related parts. And when we are treating somebody, we don't treat the part, we treat the person, we treat the system. Another aspect of reductionism is because the body is a machine made of parts, each piece of the body gets its own medicine. So you get one medicine for the heartburn, one medicine for the arthritis, one medicine for the migraines, one medicine for the blood pressure, one medicine for the insomnia. And this is what passes for the best medicine that money can buy. Holism argues we are spiritual beings having a physical experience, that the human body is inhabited by a spiritual force. The soul force in the body brings to the body intelligence. Your body is so smart, it grew itself all by itself. 
from a single cell into the magnificent manifestation of you. And there are literally millions of biochemical processes happening in your body right now beyond your conscious control. But the allopathically trained pharmaceutical centrist reductionistically oriented MDs do not believe that this is so. And to them, the body is a bag of biochemicals waiting to break. And so when it does break, it's not their job to fix it because that's not possible. Their job is to manage it, which they do really well. Let's look at how the MDs view autoimmunity. There are a number of illnesses which are called autoimmune, which means that the medical doctors believe that on Monday you were fine, but on Tuesday you woke up and your body decided to attack itself. Nobody knows why, and this is their perspective on autoimmunity. It's reality by consensus. People with autoimmune disease have antibodies that healthy people do not have sometimes. Therefore, it is the antibody that causes the disease, even though it's not always present. Why? The body is a bag of chemicals waiting to break, so crap happens. Trust me, I went to Harvard. I've been practicing naturopathic medicine for 27 years. 27 years in primary care and naturopathic medical therapeutics. And you have to really kind of be a knucklehead to not get good results with naturopathic medicine, because with naturopathic medicine, you're just helping the body to get its job done. And I got good results in my career, and then I met this guy, Dr. Joel Wallach. He's the second oldest licensed naturopathic doctor in the world. He's been published 72 times. He has the longest running health talk radio program in the United States. And I'm a gigantic fan of Dr. Wallach because since I've been leaning on his clinical experience and his research and using his therapeutics, the things I've seen people recover from, I didn't think that was possible. Dr. Wallach's therapeutics are the most effective things I've seen so far. And in 27 years, you see a lot. Remember, your medical doctor is trained in one particular type of medicine. It's called allopathic reductionism. And as it turns out, allopathic reductionism is most awesomely spectacular for trauma, surgery when it's necessary, and a handful of infectious diseases. That's the wheelhouse of the medical doctor. If you're in an automobile accident and you have, you're bleeding to death, don't go see the naturopath. You need to go to the emergency room. If you really do need surgery, the stuff that they can do in the surgical theater is unbelievable awesome. The treatment of chronic disease is not the thing of the MD. It's not. And it's not because you have a bad gene. And it's not because you're getting older. And it's not because these things are difficult to figure out. It's simply because it's a medical monopoly which exclusively promotes reductionistic pharmaceutical centrist medicine. Medical MD directed allopathic centrist treatments for chronic diseases do not work. They're the leading cause of bankruptcy and the leading cause of death in the United States. Another thing I love about Doc Wall and his company, Longevity, is that they've had the temerity to take the Food and Drug Administration to court. Imagine that. Here's the way that it goes in the not-so-free world of modern American medicine. In order for you to say that this substance cures a disease or has any effect on a disease whatsoever, you have to do about $80 million of research, then you have to get it published, and then you have to get the Food and Drug Administration to approve it. Most traditional supplement companies, most herbal companies, most food manufacturers do not have the wherewithal to do that because the bar is so high. But if you collect mountains of research, you can bring the research to the FDA if the stars align, the Food and Drug Administration will grant you something called a qualified health claim. Right now, there are 18 qualified health claims that the Food and Drug Administration allows, and Longevity was responsible for three of them. When we talk about statin drugs, typically those are something that you're not on for a week to 10 days. You're on for a long period of time. And when we get the more, more and more people on there, if those recommendations become reality, what's the long-term effect of that? Well, so the long-term effect would be more and more Alzheimer's disease, more and more erectile dysfunction, more and more hot flushes of menopause, and more and more uh, neurological illnesses. Because again, your central nervous system, your nerves, and your brain are made from cholesterol. So when you drive cholesterol into the ditch, the parts of the body that are made from cholesterol will suffer and eventually fail. And see, this is, again, the fundamental disconnect that the MDs bring to the table fundamental mistake that they make. They've thrown the baby out with the bathwater because they don't think the body can fix itself. They think that when things go wrong, that's just life. It's only a matter of time until your arteries clog. It's only a matter of time until your knee goes. It's only a matter of time until your appendix goes, right? So just cut them all out. That's their solution. The clogged artery is not the disease. 
The clogged artery is the result of the disease. The tumor is not the disease. The tumor is the result of the disease. The psoriatic lesion on the skin is not the disease. It's the result of the disease. But because of the philosophy of medicine that the MDs are trained in, allopathic reduction of it, they don't understand this. And so what do they do if you have cancer? They remove the tumor. Then what happens? Five years later, cancer comes back, right? So you have an arthritic knee. They take the knee out. What happens? Five years later, it fails. Or the other knee goes, or the hip goes, or the shoulder goes. Because the underlying process which made that part of the body fail was not addressed by the therapeutic. There was a horrible thing that happened in Japan. This happened in Minamata, chemical manufacturing plant, and they dumped hundreds of tons of mercury into a river. The algae that's in the bay sucked the mercury up, the little fish eat the algae, the medium-sized fish eat the little fish, the big fish eat the medium-sized fish, and the villagers ate the big fish. Thousands of people died, and all of the kids that were born nine months later were like Frankenstein. And the scientific community shortly thereafter figured out it was mercury toxicity that did it. And then in the early 70s, there was the Earth Movement, and so a number of universities around the United States collected $25 million to head up a research project to determine once and for all the net negative effects that pollution has on the health of human beings. And they chose Dr. Wallach to be in charge of it. 12 years, Wallach did 26,000 autopsies and over 10 million blood chemistries and histopathologies. The results are published in this book, which is now in the Smithsonian. It was because of this work that bacon and eggs doesn't cost $75 a serving. Because when was the last time you ever heard of a cow or a chicken or a pig or a sheep getting rheumatoid arthritis or high blood pressure or fibromyalgia or any of the things that affect us? These things do not happen in the animal community. Animals don't get the same diseases that humans get. They used to, but they don't anymore. This research doubled the life expectancy of the, the average household dog. Then Dr. Wallach, of course, extrapolated this research into humans and Bob's your uncle. All these autopsies and clinical histopathologies showed us this. There are 90 essential nutrients that your body needs to function the way that nature and God intended it. 90. A nutrient is called essential if you need it, but you can't make it. Here's the breakdown. 60 of the 90 are minerals, 16 are vitamins, 12 are amino acids, 2 are essential fatty acids for a grand total of 90, which we are in the habit of calling 90 for life. High blood pressure is directly related to not enough calcium and magnesium. There are a lot of things that can cause high blood pressure, but the first thing to consider is are you deficient in calcium or magnesium? Ringing in the ears often is a calcium deficiency or a sulfur-bearing molecule deficiency. Vertigo is a calcium deficiency. Type 2 diabetes, multiple mineral deficiencies. Congestive heart failure, not enough thiamine or vitamin B1. Asthma, not enough omega-3 essential fatty acids and so forth and so on. Obesity, this is the secret to weight loss that not even Oprah knows. Obesity is directly related to chronic nutrient deficiency across the board. And I have done extensive lectures on all of these. We go from this to this in 70 years. And the human body literally has the genetic potential to make it to 120. Geneticists now are saying much longer because every time your cells divide, it's like making a copy of a copy. And you know, you lose a little bit of genetic information and that can only happen so long before it can't do it, do it anymore. We have the genetic potential to make it to 120, but we're lucky in the United States if we make it to 80. And along the way, we can't hear, we're legally blind, we've lost all our hair, we've lost all our teeth. We need a prescription medicine to pee, a prescription medicine not to pee. This is not health. This is disease management. The only reason that this nonsense happens is for lack of education. You must supplement your diet with minerals. You must. We have to wash the body. We have to eat food. We have to put clothes on when we go out to protect ourselves from the element. We have to drink water. We have to not pee upstream and drink downstream. There's one more thing we need to do. Nutrify. Nutrify. Because it's not in the food. But oh, Dr. Glidden, I can get all the nutrients I need from eating the right foods. Well, it is impossible to get everything that your body needs to work the way that nature intended it, just from eating food. You could own a thousand acres of the most organic land on planet Earth and only eat the stuff that you make and you would still be nutrient deficient, and here's why. The lion's share of the 90 essential nutrients are minerals. 60 of 90, that's two thirds. 
thirds, that's 66%, right? 66% of your nutrient needs are minerals, calcium, sulfur, zinc, selenium, phosphorus, so forth and so on. The only problem with minerals is the only person that can make a mineral is God. Plants cannot make minerals. Animals cannot make minerals. The only way that minerals get into your body is if they are in the food that you eat. And the only way that they get in the food that you eat is if they're in the soil that the food is grown in. There have to be fungi and bacteria in the soil to pre-digest the mineral so that the plant can absorb it. Guess what kills the fungi and bacteria? Pesticides and herbicides. So the more we use pesticides, the more we use herbicides, the less minerals that are in the soil get sucked up into the soil. But even if it was a perfect world, there's no place on God's green earth where all 60 minerals are found in the soil. They're not. And they differ in row to row. So the farmer doesn't know this. The farmer puts NPK in the soil, which interestingly enough, deletes the other minerals. But that's three. You've got three minerals in the soil. Here's a map of selenium in the top soil in the United States. And this is one map of one mineral. There's 59 others. There's no place on the planet where all 60 minerals are found in the soil. It does not exist. You must supplement your diet. Oh, come on, doc. I can get all my selenium from Brazil nuts. We know Brazil nuts concentrate selenium. Yeah, they do. But if the Brazil nut tree is growing in soil where there's no selenium, there's no selenium in the Brazil nut, period. But we haven't been taught this. And this is why we suffer and die. Because we're all nutritionally deficient and we don't know that we are. If this represents your body's nutrient needs, in order for your body to get the job done, this tank needs to be topped off every day, every day, every day. If you do not do this, if you just try to fill this tank by eating the right stuff, you're lucky. If you can get halfway full, you're lucky. And then you experience the stress of life. Financial stress, emotional stress, aging, weather, crap in the air, crap in the water, crap in the food. You experience the stress of life, it burns through your reserves. Then your reserves get so low that something breaks and then you go to a medical doctor because they monopolize the medical market and it's the only thing you know to do. And they give you a drug that doesn't cure it, they give you a drug to manage the symptoms. Before electricity, we heated and we cooked with wood. And what happens when wood burns? You get ash wood ash. Interestingly enough, before the electrical revolution, people would collect the ash from the periphery of the fire, the gray ash, and they'd give it to farmers to, to put in their soil. They would collect the pot ash from directly in the middle of the fire where it was hottest and all the carbon had burned away, the white stuff, and they'd put it in their soups, in their breads, in their stews. Culinary ash was a big deal. Back in the day, this is interesting because when you burn wood or anything else, you burn the cellulose and the sugars and the fibers, but you can't can't burn the mineral. You need a blast furnace to degrade a mineral. So wood ash is like 99.99% minerals. And people were putting them in their food. That all went away when electricity was the new deal because no more wood, no more wood ash, no more wood ash, no more minerals. Weston Price did all this research with indigenous people who lived in the jungles. And he looked at how healthy they were and what they ate. And then he looked at what happened to their health when they moved into the cities. And he made the extrapolation that it was what they were eating in the cities that made them so unhealthy. But what he forgot was, well, that had something to do with it. But when they were in the jungle, they were eating wood ash. And they stopped doing that when they moved to the city. So no wood ash, no minerals. And minerals are 66% of the body's nutrient needs. It's the lion's share. So what does this mean pragmatically? Well, here's what I've seen happen since I've been following this method. Coretta Scott King was able to march in the Million Man March because Dr. Wallach fixed her arthritic knees with medical nutrition and diet, no drugs, no surgery. Evander Holyfield had a heart attack early on in his career. Dr. Wallach fixed his cardiovascular system, enabling him to win two heavyweight championships, and he did it with medical nutrition and diet, period. Nelson Mandela lived to be as old as he did, as healthy as he did, because while he was in prison in South Africa, a gentleman named Andy Young from Atlanta, Georgia, was shipping him Dr. Wallach's nutrients. Creflo Dollar's daughter, nine years old, was dying in a conventional medical hospital in Atlanta, Georgia from asthma, which was unresponsive medical treatment. Dr. Wallach cured Creflo Dollar's daughter's asthma in seven days with medical nutrition. 
Theo Ratliff, second oldest player in the NBA, retired a few years ago. Five years, I think, into his career, he was told by the best orthopedic doctors in the NBA that you got bad hips, bad joints, you can't play anymore, you have to stop. Theo, you're done. You cannot play professional ball with these joints in this condition. You need to quit and retire and have surgery. Theo calls Dr. Wallach up, says, Doc, what do I do? Doc told him what to do with medical nutrition and diet. He completely rebuilt his joints, no stem cell therapy, Stem cell therapy is a good therapy, but he didn't need it. He didn't use it. Most people don't need that. You just need to give your body a fighting chance. You need to stop eating food that's gumming up the works. You need to fill up your nutritional tank every day, keep your fingers crossed, and see how far back you bounce. So when a medical doctor sees somebody with heartburn, gastroesophageal reflux, or Barrett's disease, or whatever they want to call it, their therapeutic solution is to suppress stomach acid. They don't want to find out, why do I have heartburn? Their job is just to suppress it with the antacids and proton pump inhibitors. These, by the way, sell a lot. In the United States, 100 million people a month use antacids. 100 million people a month. Proton pump inhibitor sales in the US are $14 billion a year. Worldwide, proton pump, $24 billion a year, and other antacids, $14.5 billion. Everybody and their mother is taking an antacid or a proton pump inhibitor. Now, what do these drugs do? They annihilate your stomach's ability to make stomach acid. What is stomach acid supposed to do? Digest food. When you don't have stomach acid because you're taking a proton pump inhibitor, what happens to your body's ability to digest food? It goes away. Now, conventional medical doctors know because it's published that patients taking proton pump inhibitors were 30% more likely to suffer fractures, and people with high doses of the medicine had 53% higher relationship of fractures. But I would argue that it's doing a lot more than just making the bones weak because it's destroying your body's ability to digest nutrients from the food that you're taking. So you suppress stomach acid, leads to improper digestion, accelerates malnutrition, and malnutrition is the root cause of most chronic disease, period. Here's your stomach, and the stomach is a great big bag of acid. When your stomach is healthy, really, really, really acidic. That's what nature intended. You need hydrochloric acid to have strong stomach acid. You need to have strong stomach acid to not have heartburn. Hydrochloric acid is made by hydrogen and chloride, right? The CL stands for chloride. Can your body make chloride? No, where do you get it? Sodium chloride, salt. You need salt to have strong stomach acid. Who told you to be on a salt-restricted diet? Your medical doctor, who has no training, no respect, no appreciation for medical nutrition. And even though Harvard University in 1962 proved there's no relationship between salt and high blood pressure, the myth persists. One more thing that you need, there are little cells in the stomach that squirt the hydrochloric acid in there once it's made. They're called chief cells. In order to get that job done, you need to have adequate amounts of calcium. If you are deficient in calcium and you are deficient in salt, you will have weak stomach acid. Weak stomach acid causes too much gastrin to be secreted and too much gastrin relaxes that valve at the top of the stomach. Weak acid squirts into the esophagus and voila, you have acid reflux and it's caused not by too much acid, but by not enough. The reason that everybody is sick and that chronic disease is getting worse, and it is, heart disease, high blood pressure, autism, type two diabetes, obesity, the list goes on and on, is because we do not have a free medical market. The monopolization of the medical marketplace by the allopathic profession is bolstered by pharmaceutical money. They have bullied themselves into first place and they have painted everybody else as the back of the best quack with substandard training, even though their therapeutics have failed us and they have failed us miserably. We need to fill our nutritional tank up every day with the right stuff and we need to understand. And this is the fundamental thing here, right? Your body knows how to fix itself. Your body body wants to fix itself. So it's the holistic physician's job to simply support this process, simply support the body's built-in God-given ability to fix itself. I'm a naturopathic physician. I have a 25 years of clinical experience now in the delivery of science-based clinically verified alternatives to drugs and surgery to the medical marketplace. About 10 years ago, for four years, I worked for a nutritional supplement company called Vital Nutrients. Vital Nutrients, like a handful of nutritional supplement companies, only sells to healthcare providers who are already licensed and regulated. 
So there are a handful, actually more than a handful, of nutritional supplement companies in the world who only sell their nutritional supplements to physicians or to nurse practitioners. Naturopathic physicians around the world have access to nutritional supplements that you can't get over the counter because they're of such high quality and high potency. And by the way, it's worthwhile mentioning that organic, ironically, right? And I'm giving a holistic health lecture and I'm here to tell you that organic is irrelevant because when we classify something as organic, we classify it as what's not in the food, right? No pesticides, no artificial chemical fertilizers, right? No bad stuff. But organic pays no notion, pays no heed whatsoever to the stuff that's supposed to be in the food, but in point of fact is not there. In a perfect world, nature is supposed to work efficiently and effectively, but modern agricultural practices have significantly thrown a wrench into the gears. Now, in a perfect world, right, this is how it goes. We've got Mother Nature, we've got planet Earth, we've got the rivers and we've got the forests and we've got the mountains and we've got the streams and we have the soil. And in the soil, there's beneficial bacteria. The beneficial bacteria that lives in the soil breaks down the minerals which find their way into the soil, quite frankly, which the soil is made from, and turn them into a form called a colloid, colloidal minerals digested by the bacteria that's in the soil, are taken up by the roots of the plant, filter into the body of the plant, and then we come along, harvest the plant, and in addition to the vitamins and the sugars and the carbohydrates that are in the plants, if the roots of the plants touched minerals, we also absorb the minerals. Now here's an electron microscopic picture of a plant root with minerals. The little white furry crystals at the bottom of the picture are the minerals and the long slender shafts are the roots of the plant. So the roots of the plant have to be touching the mineral in order for the mineral to be absorbed into the body of the plant. Fascinating. Now the same way that the human digestive tract has beneficial bacteria which helps us to digest things well as it turns out the soil does too. And who knew? These are all of the elements which exist in the universe that we are aware of so far. The elements that are listed here in blue are the elements that must be absorbed by the plant in order for human life to march forward the way that nature intended it to. There are 60 essential minerals that the human body needs. And here's the breakdown. Oxygen, carbon, helium, and nitrogen, four main elements make up 97% of the body. The other, well, 2.2 kilograms, 2.2 out of 70 is not a lot. The other stuff that's involved, which is about 3% are minerals, major essential minerals, calcium, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium, sodium, chlorine, magnesium, and then other minerals, trace minerals that perhaps you've never heard of. Things like fluorine, rubidium, strontium, right? The list goes on and on and on. There are 60 essential minerals, 90 essential nutrients that the human body needs in order to function the way that nature intended it to. 60 essential minerals that the human body needs in order to function the way that nature intended it to. I mean, there are some minerals that people have never even heard of lay people, vanadium, molybdenum. Molybdenum, of course, is funny little mineral and it's essential for the lubrication of nerve sheaths in the body. And if you become deficient in molybdenum, you will develop carpal tunnel syndrome. Isn't that interesting? As a matter of fact, you can trace all chronic disease, 100% of chronic diseases to mineral deficiencies. And the fact of the matter is that the only place we can find minerals are in the soil. And unless the root of the plant is in touch with the minerals, there's not going to be any minerals in the plant. And if there aren't any minerals in the plant, well then, we've got big problems. Big, big problems. There are fewer minerals in the soil than there were a hundred years ago because of modern agricultural practices and also because that's just the way that it is. Mother Nature does not lay minerals down, even Stephen. Minerals are laid down helter-skelter. Because of pesticide use in industrial farming, the bacteria whose job it is to digest the minerals into a more absorbable form for the plant are not present in the soil anymore. This is not good. Doesn't take rocket science to figure this out, right? If you mess with the soil and now there are fewer minerals in it than there are supposed to be, you get weaker plants. Weaker plants are less resistant to insects, mold, weather. So what happens if now all of a sudden you're growing weaker plants? You need more pesticides and more chemicals to keep the nasty little natural critters away because the plant is too weak to handle it. 
Kind of like going outside in a snowstorm with your bathing suit. That's not a good idea. You need to be bundled up to handle that stress. Well, in order for a plant growing in the soil to handle just the natural stress of life, insects, mold, competing plants, competing microorganisms, it needs minerals to be strong. Demineralized food, demineralized vegetables, demineralized fruits, demineralized grains don't taste good. So what happens if now you're growing and harvesting food that doesn't taste good? What do you have to do? You have to add sugar to it so people will eat it. Now, interestingly enough, one of the things that sugar does, sugar is not the antichrist. Your DNA is made from sugar. Sugar is the gasoline of the body, but too much sugar, which is easy to do now because the food industry puts sugar in everything just to make it taste good because of the food is demineralized. Excessive amounts of sugar, the operative word being excessive amounts of sugar, leads to mineral deficiencies in the human body. It's a catch-22, it's a runaway train. This is the major reason why there is so much sickness in the world today. And nobody is talking about it except Dr. Wallach and myself. Mineral depletion in the soil is getting worse and worse. And this data was collected over the course of nine years from 1983 to 1992. Now, do you think the situation's gotten worse or better since 1992? It's worse. Now, here's what happens when you start putting minerals back into the environment of plants. See, there are three little plants there. Vase number one is just water. Vase number two is a commercial flower additive. You know, the stuff in the little packet that you get when you buy roses and you dump it into the water to extend the lifespan of the cut flower. And number three is longevity liquid minerals in a one to 100 solution. That's after nine days, that's after 12 days. And you can see that the cut flower placed in a mineral solution is much healthier over a longer period of time than with the commercial flower additives or with the water. Blooms last longer without wilting. Stems don't get bent. There's no discoloration. Why? Because plants love minerals. You're eating the wrong food all the time, but you don't know it, and it's not your fault. You took the wrong dog to the hunt. You went to medical doctors who have no training, no respect, no appreciation for medical nutrition tell you what to eat. You let the people who make the food tell you what to eat, and it's killing you, literally. We don't teach you this in school. I took a trip to the Longevity Mine in Utah in order to look at the minerals that Longevity puts in its nutritional supplements. Okay, so here we are up close and personal with the mining deposit, which is the source of the Longevity minerals. And we are going to walk up right against it now and take a look at the consistency of the humic shale. Here's where it is. See this? I just pulled this off of the rock and look what happens here. It just crumbles. See that? Very, very, very fragile stuff. Pretty cool. It's interesting, isn't it? Longevity has the mining rights, the exclusive mining rights to this mineral deposit for the next 100 years. The, the deposit is so huge, you don't have to worry about Longevity running out of the minerals, at least not in our lifetime. This is an actual mineral deposit that we took off of the shelf layer, put it in a Petri dish. The Petri dish had water in it and the mineral rock, it's called humic shale, soaked the water up. And as the water worked its way up through the rock like a sponge, the minerals came out. The minerals are all water soluble, which is interesting because when you go to the mine and you look, one thing that you will see at the very top of the deposit, there's a limestone cap. The presence of the limestone has prevented water from seeping into the minerals themselves, the humic shale themselves, and evaporating, running all of the minerals away. This is why Longevity Mineral Deposit in Utah is so unique and so different and so rich in minerals because the limestone cap on top has protected it from the runoff of water that other mineral deposits have experienced over time. When you combine extremely high quality minerals and Dr. Wallach's clinical experience, first as a veterinarian who published this book, which is in the Smithsonian Institution, took 12 years to write tens of thousands of autopsies, millions of blood chemistries and histopathologies. When you combine Dr. Wallach's clinical research into mineral deficiencies in animals and 30 plus years of clinical experience working with humans and the longevity mineral mine in Utah, you get recipes of nutritional supplements which are second to none.
All wines are made from grapes, right? But not all wines are created equal. Well, what's the difference? The recipe is the difference. Longevity's recipes are informed by $25 million of federally funded research, tens of millions of histopathologies, and tens of thousands of autopsies. Brought to bear with 25 years plus of clinical experience, it doesn't get any better than that. Most people incorrectly assume you can get all of your nutrient needs just from eating from the four food groups, one of which we know to be a killer, grains. Everybody in the world is misinformed, which is why everybody is sick, which is why everybody is suffering. That was the subtitle of my book. Everybody is sick, and I know why. Because everybody is minerally deficient, and this is why our work here is so very important. Without minerals, we're dead in the water. You could tune your car up. You could take it to the best car person in the world. You could get a whole brand new engine and a brand new transmission and a brand new battery and brand new spark plugs. For goodness sake, you could go and buy a brand new car. But if there's no air in the tire, you're not going anywhere, buddy. Well, in the same way that your car needs air in all four tires, your body needs to be loaded to the brim with minerals. And if it's not loaded to the brim with minerals, it is only a matter of time until something breaks. If you stick around in Longevity Nation long enough, you will hear testimonials that will bring you to your knees and make you cry. And then you'll be filled with some form of righteous anger, indignation over the way that medicine, the way that agriculture, the way that medical care is played out here, not only in the United States, but all around the world. It's not health care, it's disease management. If your illness is caused by a mineral deficiency, is a pharmaceutical drug going to fix that? No. This is why what we do in Longevity Nation is so important. Nobody knows about the 90 essential nutrients. Everybody needs to. Nobody knows the mineral story. Everybody needs to. Everybody's body is extremely nutritionally deficient, especially in the mineral zone. Most people have been running on 33% strength for most of their lives. So when you finally get a clue and you finally pour into your body a nutritional supplement replete in absorbable minerals, things change. Switches start turning on that have been turned off sometimes for decades. Healing is easy. Surgery is complicated. Healing is easy. Your body knows how to fix itself. Your body wants to fix itself. Your body is attempting right now to optimize its structure and function, but it can't do it without the 90 essential nutrients emphasis on minerals. That's what we bring to the table, and that's why we are now and always will be number one. Healthcare, all the money in the world won't fix it. We don't need better insurance coverage. We don't need less bureaucracy. These things, of course, would help the current system, but the current system revolves around a medical monopoly. The real problem with healthcare, with our horrible health outcomes, not only in the United States, but all around the world, industrialized nations, is because we haven't had a free medical market since 1912. 1912, the American Medical Association was granted exclusive control over who could and who couldn't call themselves a doctor by the United States Congress. This was under pressure from the Carnegies and the Rockefellers. They exerted a hostile takeover of medicine and we've been underneath their monopoly ever since. Your medical doctor may be the nicest person that God ever created, but your medical doctor doesn't practice medicine. Your medical doctor practices allopathic medicine. And allopathic medicine is really, really good for trauma care, surgery, emergency medicine, a handful of infectious diseases. That's the wheelhouse of MD-directed pharmaceutical centers medicine. But for most of the conditions that most people go to the doctor for most of the time, that medical system is bad. It's incorrect. It's wrong. It doesn't deliver. It's not because medical doctors are stupid or sadistic. It's because their methodology is built upon a philosophy which is inconsistent with the reality of the human experience. Medical doctors are trained to suppress symptoms with drugs and surgery. Holistic doctors are trained to usher their patients into a state of health. There's a big difference between suppressing symptoms, managing symptoms with drugs and surgery, and helping people to get healthy. This is an eye-opener for most people because of the monopoly that we've been under the influence of. Your medical doctor doesn't know what's best for you. They only know what they've been trained in. And they haven't been trained in medicine. Medicine is a big umbrella. They've been trained in allopathic medicine. And allopathic medicine has maintained its top dog position, not because their therapeutics are better, not because their outcomes are better, certainly not because their medicines are less expensive, but through political power and persuasion exerted by the pharmaceutical industry, which is the biggest lobbyer 
in the United States, $5 billion a year. We need a level playing field. We need a country inside of which citizens have access to whatever type of licensed and regulated medicine that they choose. And it's all covered by insurance. Wouldn't that be great? If your hospital allowed naturopathic doctors, if your hospital allowed homeopathic doctors, chiropractors, Ayurvedic practitioners, traditional Chinese doctors, acupuncturists, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great if your insurance paid for it? Well, I'm here to tell you something. If all of that happened, we'd have much better health outcomes. But, you know, the insurance companies don't want that. The pharmacy pharmaceutical industry doesn't want that. They don't want you to be healthier. And I honestly don't think any of this is going to change in my lifetime because the money and the power is too big, too big. When I talk about this, it's like whispering in a hurricane, quite frankly. People just don't get it. Well, some people do. You know, if history doesn't repeat itself, it rhymes. If the story is true, not everybody got on Noah's Ark. <laughs> More is the pity. Well, not everybody listens to what I and my colleagues have to say and more's the pity. They medicate and manage your symptoms, suppress your symptoms with drugs and surgery. You don't get better. You maintain at a subpar level and then something else breaks and then something else breaks. And you know, by the time you're 60, 70 years old, you've got hearing aids, dentures, all your hair's fallen out, three fused vertebrae, you've got no gallbladder, you've got no appendix, you've got no tonsils, you've got no uterus, you've got no ovaries. You need a prescription medicine to pee, a prescription medicine not to pee, a prescription medicine to fall asleep, a prescription medicine to wake up, a prescription medicine for the pain that you eventually become addicted to it's a nightmare and keep it in perspective thank god for insulin thank god for lidocaine thank god for the sterile technique your medical doctor is really 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 good for emergency medicine trauma care but for chronic illness they're horrible look at the outcomes for goodness sake oh there's this thing that you can find in the blood it's called rheumatoid factor an antibody that's found in about 70 to 80 percent of people with rheumatoid arthritis however some people with rheumatoid arthritis don't have it and some people without rheumatoid arthritis test positive for it. So is it the antibody or is it not? There's another one called the anti-CCP antibody, also associated with rheumatoid arthritis. If you test positive for this, there's a 90% chance you have rheumatoid arthritis. On the other hand, many rheumatoid arthritis patients test negative for this, so this test all by itself is virtually useless. There's another one called the anti-nuclear antibody. It measures the immune system chemicals that indicate autoimmune disease 30 to 40 percent of RA patients have it which means 60 percent of them don't this is fuzzy logic but because it's brought to you by the medical doctors who exist in a self-regulating self-policing system of medicine with no checks and balances they can get away with it we don't have a free medical market ladies and gentlemen we haven't had a free medical market for a long time and people are dying because of it so you don't need to be afraid of the coronavirus you don't need to be any more afraid of the coronavirus than you need to be afraid of any other influenza virus you just don't numbers don't lie the leading cause of death in the United States is MD-directed medical therapeutics. 780,000 people a year are killed by MD treatment. That's more people than are killed by heart disease or cancer. Leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States, MD therapeutics. Because the most expensive therapeutic is the one that doesn't work. So you don't have osteoporosis because you have a voodoo curse. You have osteoporosis because your body ran out of the stuff it needed to keep the bones healthy. There was somebody pumping gas right next to you last week who went to bed the night before praying to God for help. Because conventional medicine has let us down, they've let us down hard, and people don't know what to do. If you help us spread our message, there is no limit to how many people you can help. And remember, armies need to be paid, right? Well, guess what? This is a non-militant, grassroots coalition of the informed. You don't know what you're missing, ladies and gentlemen. Longevity is here for the long haul. If you're a guest, get with the person that invited you here tonight. See how it is you can work with us. When you unwind the chromosome, the chromosome is made up of DNA, strands and strands and strands of deoxyribonucleic acid. The DNA has a lot of very different distinct parts. The size of the latter, ribose, which is fancy schmancy doctor talk for sugar. Interestingly enough, your DNA, the very structure of the building blocks of life, is sugar. That's what makes you so sweet. Sugar is the gasoline of the body. Sugar is not the problem. The problem is how much is present in the body at any moment in time and whether or not your body has the raw materials necessary to metabolize the sugar. Oh, it's the MTHFR gene. That's the problem. That's a bad thing. The MTHFR, that's going to cause all kinds of things.
And that's a bad gene, right? Oh my god, I can't have the MTHFR gene. No, no, no. It's not the gene that's the problem. It's a mutation of the gene that's the problem. If the MTHFR gene mutates, vascular disease, neural tube defects, Alzheimer's, dementia, colon cancer go up. Leukemia rates go up. Not from a gene, from a mutation of a gene. Medical science doesn't give a gosh darn about what causes the mutation, nor is the research going there. It's not a gene. It's a mutation of a gene. It's not genetics. It's epigenetics. So, right, inquiring minds want to know, well, what's causing all these mutations? I mean, that's a good question, right? Wheat, barley, rye, and oats harm the small intestine. And the small intestine is the, the organ in the body whose job is to absorb nutrition into the bloodstream. It's not a good idea to damage that. But every time you eat a whole wheat sandwich or pasta, you're damaging your small intestinal tract. Who knew? By the way, who told you to eat that stuff? Monsanto, General Mills, Betty Crocker, who wasn't even a real person. Stop it. Bad dog. No biscuit. Oil in a bottle is also one of the worst foods a human being can consume. Oil in a bottle is loaded with free radicals. Free radicals promote inflammation in the body, period. If you heat an oil, the free radical production goes ballistic. I don't even want you to be downwind of fried food. That's how bad it is. The discovery of this first animal model of CF demonstrated that pancreatic lesions histologically identical to those observed in human patients with cystic fibrosis can be produced by dietary means. But what does your keys do? They fire him. For 36 years, children have been born with cystic fibrosis needlessly because the people at your keys primate research center were old school and unwilling to look at the evidence directly in their face. One more reason to fire your medical doctor now. Can you imagine having a scientific breakthrough of this magnitude and then being fired because of it? Can you imagine what that would do? Well, Dr. Wallach took the bullet. He soldiered on. And the world owes an enormous debt to Dr. Wallach for his humanitarian persistence in the face of such overarching ignorance. You know, you've got arthritis, right? It hurts, man. Why do you have arthritis? Because your body's run out of the stuff it needs to maintain a healthy joint. Your skeleton is begging you for nutrients. But you don't know what you don't know. And when it comes to your bones and joints, it is a slow, steady slide into the land of pain and suffering, which the MDs are only too happy to address with expensive, dangerous, side effect ridden treatments, which have been proven and published to not work and yet they roll them out sleep very soundly while you're still in pain and this passes for the best medical system in the world you've got to be kidding me well you know it's like the movie the matrix you know everybody's wrong well you know what i'm the red pill time to wake up reductionism argues that man is smarter than nature man is smarter than god that the human body is a bag of biochemicals waiting to break and when something does go wrong it's the doctor's job the reductionistically trained md's job to orchestrate a hostile takeover of the metabolism of the body right so we give an antibiotic an anti-inflammatory an anti-hypertensive we give something to kill the tumor killer biotic we only recommend if the diagnosis is rheumatoid arthritis because we believe that rheumatoid arthritis is nutrient deficiencies on on top of a parasitic infection of the joint capsule by a little bug called a mycoplasma. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, we believe that there is a bug living in the joint capsule that's messing things up. So we support the immune system and hope that by doing so, the immune system will rally and kill the bug while we're delivering medical nutrition. So for every single bone and joint issue, we use the Yontangy Tangerine, liquid calcium, which is OsteoFX, glucogel in the capsules or the liquid or both, essential fatty acids, plant-derived minerals, for every different delineation of bone and joint trouble known to humankind now or in the future. And if there's a rheumatoid problem, we add killer biotic and it's that simple. Most people have no idea how to interpret statistics and we just think, oh, you know, the National Cancer Institute, they've got our back. I've just proven that the data here is entirely misleading. So let's take a look at the SEER data as it applies specifically to cancer patients, not comparing them to the rest of the population. Small cell lung cancer survival rate, 96% of the people who get small cell lung cancer are dead within five years. 67% of women who get 
get ovarian cancer are dead within five years. 98% of people who get pancreatic cancer are dead within five years. 69% of men who get prostate cancer are dead within five years. 91% of people who get rectal cancer are dead within five years. 98% of people who get stomach cancer are dead within five years. You didn't have a bad gene, you had a bad doctor. You're a medical doctor, your obstetrician has no training, no experience, no respect, and no appreciation for nutrition. They don't even know what a vitamin is. You want to watch a medical doctor's head explode? Ask him what a vitamin is. Doctor, what's a vitamin? How many essential nutrients are there, doctor? What's the relationship between selenium and breast cancer recurrence? I'd like to know. Do you know what it is? They don't know anything. But because they monopolize the medical marketplace, and most people don't know even how to pronounce naturopathic medicine, and, you know, they think that all holistic doctors are left over from the 60s, fall out from the 60s. We suffer needlessly. And this concept of science progressing one funeral at a time, it doesn't only happen in the scientific community it happens in your family because your parents aren't going to believe me they're going to believe marcus welby even though marcus welby's wrong they're going to believe george clooney on gray's anatomy but every once in a while you'll come across somebody with an open mind you want to have a car that lasts for 200,000 miles? You got to change the oil. You're going to put transmission fluid in it. You're going to put brake fluid in it. You're going to put power steering fluid in it. You're going to top everything off, right? For goodness sake, most of us take better care of our cars than we do of our bodies, but not because we're slackers, just because we don't know any better because nobody's ever taught us. Nobody's ever lined it up like this. Surgery is complicated. Healing is easy because your body knows how to fix itself. Your body wants to fix itself. So I have the easiest job in the world. I deliver unto your body the stuff it needs to fix itself. Stop eating stuff that's gumming up the works and get out of the way. This is the recipe to optimize joint function, period. And I don't care if you have rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, it doesn't matter which subset of bone and joint trouble you have. It does not matter what the MDs have called it. This is what we recommend you do. Science progresses one funeral at a time. This is why conventional medicine is the leading cause of death in the United States, the leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States. Even though we have unbelievably awful outcomes from the conventional medical system, it remains intact because the nature of the scientific mind is to cling to whatever it was that you were taught. You would think scientists would have exactly the opposite view. They'd be very open-minded and they'd want to observe the data first, but it's not that. It is the rare medical professional, the rare scientist who will abandon 10, 20, 30, 40 years of clinical work or thought and actually admit to themselves that they were wrong. And so we suffer needlessly underneath the wheel of old-fashioned, outdated therapeutics. It's dogma, just intellectually stubborn nonsense based on this notion that everything is genetic. I mean, this is the scapegoat. The breast cancer, the infamous BRCA gene. Most people will tell you that it's actually a gene, but let's read the medical literature. BRCA1 and BRCA2 are normally expressed in the cells of breast and other tissue, are normally occurring genes that do good work in the human body. They help repair damaged DNA or destroy cells if the DNA cannot be repaired. It's kind of like the fire department and the police department combined. It's a good thing. They are involved in the repair of chromosomal changes. So the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene help the chromosomes to fix themselves when they get damaged by the stress of life. The BRCA gene does not cause breast cancer. If the BRCA gene itself becomes mutated, then you get breast cancer. It's a mutation of the gene. It is not a gene. And there is a gigantic difference, but medical science does not consider the obvious question. Well, what causes the mutation? Because the chromosome is the code of life, if the rung is broken or deformed because of the stress of life, when that part of the chromosome tries to make an eye or a lung or a skin cell, it's not gonna be able to do it correctly and you're gonna get messed up. So when this particular gene region is assailed by the stress of life, your genetic material cannot express itself the way that nature intended. So you get cystic fibrosis, you get autism. These are caused by mutations in the genetic code, not an individual gene. A damaged chromosome, not a specific part of your chromosomal material of your DNA that codes for autism. That's nonsense. 
That does not happen. And this is one of the biggest misconceptions that most people have. They think that there's actually a gene that codes for cancer. There's not. There's not a gene that codes for autism. There's not a gene that codes for cystic fibrosis. Not all nutritional supplements are created equal. Nutritional supplements are like wine. All wine is made from grapes. There's a great deal of difference between Annie Boone Springs green apple wine and a nice California Pinot. But what's the difference? The recipe. I've been doing naturopathic medical therapeutics for a quarter of a century. Members of my profession are the stewards of medical nutrition. This is our thing. This is our wheelhouse. And as God is my witness, I am here to tell you that in 25 years of clinical work, Dr. Wallach's nutritional supplements, like this one, glucogel, and this one, which is a liquid glucogel, are more effective than anything I've ever used. And by the way, I used to work for a nutritional supplement company that only sold to physicians. I've been around this block a lot. What it boils down to is science, recipe, and clinical effectiveness. Longevity on all three of those counts has a lot. Because the MDs are trained in reductionistic medicine, it only makes sense that they would excel in trauma care, surgery when it's necessary, and a handful of infectious diseases. These are the things that the MDs are great at. Thank God for Novocaine, penicillin maybe, but nonetheless, there is a place for the MD using allopathic reductionistic therapeutics. But because of the medical monopoly, the MDs treat everything all the time. And even though while we have been under their tutelage and care, everything is getting worse, we still go to them. For goodness sakes, we don't go to chiropractors for open heart surgery or to remove bullets from our arm. It is my opinion that neither should we go to a medical doctor if we have a chronic disease. When it comes to chronic diseases, MD directed medical treatments for chronic diseases, they don't cure anything. They're the leading cause of bankruptcy and the leading cause of death. And what's the most expensive medicine? It's the one that doesn't work. World Health Organization over the next 20 years. Insulin sales are predicted to grow from 12 billion to 54 billion dollars a year, doubling what's happening in the United States, tripling in the European Union, and expanding 12 fold in the rest of the world. Both type 1 diabetics and type 2 diabetics use insulin, but the main driver of the increased insulin sale prediction is type 2 diabetes. What causes type 2 diabetes? Coming from what are supposed to be the best medical scientific minds in the United States. People with type 2 diabetes make insulin, but their cells don't use it as well as they should. Well, we all knew that. That's the definition of type 2 diabetes, but what causes type 2 diabetes? Usually a combination of things cause type 2 diabetes, including genes. That doesn't answer the question whatsoever medical treatments for chronic diseases they don't cure anything they're the leading cause of bankruptcy and the leading cause of death and what's the most expensive medicine it's the one that doesn't work in the final analysis for chronic diseases they're just the wrong dog for the hunt and the only reason that they still have a job the only reason that we still go to them is because that they exist in the monopoly which we were warned about when the Constitution of the United States was written but you know you don't know what you don't know and since these distinctions are not taught in school most most people just assume that because the medical doctors are the only show in town, their therapeutics must be better than everybody else's, and this is not the case. The medical doctors are in power because they legislated themselves there. After the Flexner Report, with influence by the Rockefeller Foundation and the Carnegie's, in the early 1900s, complete control over the delivery of medicine was given to the MDs. It was a behind-the-scenes deal, it had nothing to do with efficacy of treatment or medical science. Being overweight or obese can cause insulin resistance, especially if you carry extra pounds around the middle. This also is not true. There is a correlation between people who are overweight and the incidence of type 2 diabetes, but that sword cuts both ways. It is not an accepted scientific fact that being overweight causes type 2 diabetes. They're showing up at the same time. The medical doctors believe incorrectly that being overweight causes type 2 diabetes. We are of the opinion that it is the same thing that causes both the tendency to eat too many calories which causes people to become overweight and type 2 diabetes we believe that obesity and type 2 diabetes are two arms of the same octopus the medical doctors believe that obesity causes type 2 diabetes and they are wrong rocket science
If this tank represents your body's nutritional needs, in order for your body to be healthy and for everything to work the way that nature and God intended it to, your nutritional tank needs to be topped off every day with the 90 essential nutrients. But because nobody knows this, nobody supplements appropriately. And even if you have a perfect diet, you eat exactly the right stuff that you need to and it's all organic, you can secure about 30-40% of your body's nutrient needs from food. But then you experience the stress of life. Emotional stress, financial stress, environmental stress, crap in the air, crap in the food, crap in the water, bugs, viruses, germs, lions and tigers and bears. Guess what the stress does? It burns right through your reserves. Now you're running on fumes, baby. You know what happens when you run on fumes? Things start to break. You think you've got osteoporosis, which is thinning of the bones because you have a bad gene? <laughs> no. Osteoporosis, which is thinning of the bones because you have a bad gene? <laughs> no. You get osteoporosis because for the last 30 years, your body has been deficient in the stuff it needs to keep the bones healthy. And every day, unwittingly, you're eating food that's causing chronic low-grade inflammation to the joints because you listen to Dr. Oz tell you what to eat. Dr. Oz is a cardiac surgeon. You want to get Dr. Oz's advice, you should listen to him about what type of chest spreaders to use and, and which type of stitches the best but we've been socialized by a hundred years of pharmaceutical profiteering propaganda to think that the MD has a secret decoder ring to all things medical just by virtue of their education and they do not your medical doctor bless his heart or her heart may be the nicest human being in the world but they have no education no appreciation no respect no understanding whatsoever about the relationship between medical nutrition and your health Hurt of your nutrient needs are minerals. Things like calcium, magnesium, sulfur, zinc, selenium. The only problem with minerals is the plants can't make minerals. Animals can't make minerals. Minerals are found in the soil or not. Here's a map of a very important mineral for human health, selenium, in the U.S. There's white, there is no selenium at all. This is just one mineral out of 60. There are 60 other maps, but they're all different. There's no place on the planet that we've discovered in the topsoil where all 60 minerals are found. It does not exist. So the only way selenium or calcium or zinc gets into your body is if the roots of the plant that you're eating touched it when they were growing. Same goes for cow's milk. If a cow's eating grass that was grown in soil that was calcium deficient, the cow's milk is calcium deficient. Interestingly enough, ounce for ounce, there's more calcium in maple syrup than there is in cow's milk. Who knew? We knew. And that's why we do these webinars. 80,000 people a year are killed by MD treatment. The leading cause of death in the United States is MD-directed medical therapeutics. That's more people than are killed by heart disease or cancer. The leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States, MD therapeutics. Because the most expensive therapeutic is the one that doesn't work. So you don't have osteoporosis because you have a voodoo curse. You have osteoporosis because your body ran out of the stuff it needed to keep the bones healthy. This is a cross-section of your spine, and the white stuff in this drawing is the bones, your backbones, the stuff the chiropractors adjust. We love chiropractors, by the way. The red tissue here is the cartilage cushion between the joints, between the bones, and the black, green, and purple stuff is the nerve. When you're healthy, the red colored discs, they're not really red in life, but for artistic expression, right, they're red. Those discs are like feather pillows, and they're chock full of feathers. But as you go down the road of life, if you're not consuming the right nutrients, the bones and the disc run out of structural integrity. Cancer by the numbers from the American Cancer Society and the United States Center for Disease Control. Between 2010 and 2020, there will be almost 2 million new cases of cancer which are projected to happen. What does this mean? This means that conventionally trained medical doctors who hold sway over the research, development, and delivery of medical treatments are lousy at treating cancer. They have no idea what causes cancer, and they have no idea how to cure it because under their watch, cancer is getting worse. According to the United States Center for Disease Control, in 2016, there will be 1,685,210 new cancer cases. Nearly 600,000 people will die from it. This translates to 4,620 new cases of cancer every day, 1,630 deaths. How many people died in the Twin Towers? 2,000. We went to war. 1,600 people a day die from cancer. And what do we do? We continue to give the people who have failed us more money. The scientific community isn't even tight on how many genes there are. 
And you see all of this area between the known gene regions? All of this stuff? 97% of the genetic material. We have no idea what they do. And so scientists in their hubris and in their unbelievable, unmitigated arrogance before the majesty of nature collectively refer to this 97% as junk DNA. Well, we don't know what it is, so therefore it's junk. It underlines very nicely the hubris that conventional medical doctors bring to the table in their examination of human physiology, anatomy, and biochemistry. Because if they don't know what it does, therefore it must not be valuable whatsoever. And this is conventional, I don't want to say wisdom because it's not wise at all. But the take home message here is most of the genetic material, all of the sequences that have been decoded, we know what they are. We have absolutely positively no flipping idea whatsoever as to what they do. Your medical doctor is clueless as to what the operative cause of type 2 diabetes is. After hundreds of millions of dollars of research, clueless. And when they disseminate information like this on WebMD, which is supposed to be one of your most trusted academic scientific sources, it speaks to two things. People in the United States have been dumbed down by a bad public education system, by too much fluoride in the water, by not enough nutrition, by low cholesterol diets, too much much sugar in the food and people are just not smart enough to understand that information like this does not answer the question. The medical community is no closer to understanding what causes type 2 diabetes now than they were at the beginning of human history. This should give you cause for concern and cause for alarm because for goodness sakes aren't you paying hard-earned money out of your paycheck every month to gain access to health care which is not health care it's disease management. Autism is linked to a deficiency in the trace mineral zinc. There's not enough zinc that base pairs bend and disconnect and the genes are all messed up. Spina bifida, which is a birth defect, is caused by a vitamin B9, also known as folic acid deficiency. You don't have enough folic acid, the chromosome breaks, you get spina bifida. Cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, selenium deficiency. Dr. Wallach has published research which proves these things. Your chromosomes are like a printer. And in this metaphor, the ink would be the base pairs that make everything in the human body. So if your color printer ran out of red ink, it's got the other ones, but it doesn't have those. Your pictures, they're still going to be kind of what you wanted, but they're different. And that's what happens when your chromosomal material is affected by nutritional stress. So you don't have enough zinc, you get a break. You don't have enough selenium, you get a malfunction. You don't have enough folic acid, it gets weak, and it doesn't express itself when it tries to replicate. Who knows? The projection is that we will spend $160 billion a year on ineffective cancer treatments. What's that you say, Dr. Glidden? Go into the National Cancer Institute's website, check on statistics for, for instance, breast cancer that says that the percent of women surviving after five years of a diagnosis with breast cancer is nearly 90%. Well, these data were derived when you compare women who have breast cancer and how long they live after they had breast cancer cancer with the general population. When you compare how long women who get breast cancer live with how long women their same age in the same country live, 89.7 survivorship, but when you just look at how many women got cancer and how many of those women were still alive five years down the road, it's a completely different story. Only 29% survive five years after their original diagnosis little children undergoing chemotherapy and all their hair falls out and adults bravely fighting cancer. Oh, they're going to beat cancer. They're going to fight cancer, right? Our heart goes out to these people. And then we see the high tech stuff that the MDs embed themselves in and we stop thinking. I call it compassionate subterfuge and socialized idolatry. We have genuflected at the altar of the MD for a hundred years believing being socialized to believe that their way is the only way. So even when their treatments fail us, even when their treatments harm us, even when their treatments bankrupt us, even when their treatments kill us, we go back to the same well because we don't know any better. And quite frankly, I think that we've been manipulated here. I mean, whose heart isn't gonna go out to a kid like that or an adult like that? It's a brave fight. But the numbers are not in your favor if you are availing yourself of allopathic cancer treatment. They just are not. And it's about time we all woke up. 
Chemotherapy history is an interesting thing. Soldiers were exposed to mustard gas. The medical professionals took stock of what happened to them after they were exposed to the mustard gas, and it, and it showed, son of a gun, that one of the things that happened was their white cell counts reduced. So these two guys, Lewis Goodman and Alfred Gilman, both PhDs at Yale, decided to do experiments with mustard gas on people with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and they found that, son of a gun, when they did analogs of the mustard gas, right, different derivations of mustard gas, different chemical derivations, and they injected it into non-Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, victims, that the lymphomas got better. And this was the birth of the chemotherapeutic industry. Interestingly enough, again, we don't want to overlook the elephant in the room. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma here still kills 20,150 people in the U.S. a year. So I guess the mustard gas treatment wasn't that great, right? But see, this is how the MDs think. In the context of my private practice in states in which I'm licensed and regulated as a physician, I can treat disease. In the context of this webinar and most of the public webinars that I do, we do not treat disease. But what we do do is recommend therapeutics, science-based, clinically verified, formulated and delivered by licensed physicians, the intention of which are to support and promote your bones and your joints' ability to fix themselves. And how do we support and promote your body's ability to have healthy bones and joints. The cartilage of your joints are made from glucosamine sulfate, chondroitin sulfate, and a funny little thing called hyaluronic acid. Say that three times fast. So guess what we do? If I've got weak ligaments, tendons, bones, or joints, I'm gonna recommend supplements that are filled with glucosamine sulfate, chondroitin sulfate, and hyaluronic acid. Hallelujah and pass the hat. This is it. Glucogel. That's why it was developed. It's a law now in the United States that you have to buy medical insurance. Does medical insurance give you access to naturopathic medicine? Only in a handful of states. Insurance gives you access to MD-directed medicine. And in Canada, you don't even have the option. They take it right out of your salary. They figure out how much they're going to take, and you don't have anything to say about it whatsoever. And what have you received in return for this large amount of money that you have paid to gain access to medicine, a medical system? System which exists either on purpose or by default to promote the sale of pharmaceutical drugs, the intention of which is not to cure the condition. Does insulin cure insulin resistance? No. Does insulin cure type 1 diabetes? No. Does insulin cure type 2 diabetes? No. Inquiring minds want to know, why hasn't the medical community come up with a cure for type 2 diabetes? I'll tell you why, because that's not their intention, that's not their training, that's not their methodology. Your medical doctor is not a sadistic human being. Your medical doctor does not have the intention to increase human suffering. But your medical doctor has been brought up inside of an academic system which argues the human body does not have the ability to fix itself. So researchers are not concerned with figuring out how to cure disease. They're not. For goodness sakes, your medical doctor doesn't even know how to cure heartburn. They can manage it, but they can't cure it. Now to the system of medicine, the academic scientific system that doesn't know how to cure heartburn, do you think they're going to be able to cure type 2 diabetes? No. Cancer? No. Arthritis? No. Heart disease? No. And this is the billion pound gorilla sitting in the middle of planet Earth that nobody is talking about. The current academic system of medicine, MD-directed, allopathic, reductionistic, pharmaceutical centrist medicine is the wrong academic system in order to understand how to cure disease. It's the wrong dog for the hunt. Here's Dr. Wallach back in the day at Emory University. See this little monkey? That's the first non-human ever to be definitively diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. Before Dr. Wallach's research, it was thought that cystic fibrosis could only occur in humans because human genes can't cross over into monkey genes. You can't do that. You can't mate a human with a monkey. The genes don't mix. So they thought that cystic fibrosis was 100% genetic and it's got to be only in humans, but Wallach found it in a monkey. So that blew one theory out the water. And then Wallach also discovered that he could make cystic fibrosis happen in baby monkeys at will by restricting the trace mineral selenium from the diet of the pregnant monkey mother. Not enough selenium in the blood of the mother monkey. Not enough selenium in the developing body of the baby monkey. Cystic fibrosis. Guaranteed. And when Dr. Wallach brought this research to Yerkes Primate Research Center, they fired him because his ideas were so far outside of the box of conventional medicine, they couldn't handle it. What science is involved with now is different methods to determine whether you have the mutation or not.
And then if you have the mutation, what do they say? Cut it off, baby, cut it off. And remember, the little amount of understanding that we have about gene regions and 97% junk DNA, we have no idea what the hell's going on. So we assume, well, I don't assume, but conventional geneticists assume that once you've got the BRCA mutation, you've always got the BRCA mutation. There's nothing you can do to reverse it, even though the BRCA gene in its healthy state reverses mutations in other parts of the chromosome. <laughs> There's nothing you can do to fix the BRCA gene, so let's not worry about that. Let's just develop more testing so that we can see women who have the BRCA gene, and we don't even really know if 100% of the time that goes to cancer, but we're going to cut the breasts off anyway, because that's what we do. And your relatives gave them money to fund that research. Run for cancer. You collected money to give to this type of nonsensical, old-fashioned, outdated, archaic, for-profit nonsense. Take our chemotherapy, even though the statistical odds of it helping us are extremely poor. Chemotherapy history is an interesting thing. Chemotherapy was actually dreamed up because of something that happened in World War II, right? Mustard cast, but it was employed in World War I, like in the trenches, right? Bad, bad stuff. In the World War II, it wasn't used. However, the U.S. thought that the Germans were going to use it. The Germans thought that the U.S. was going to use it. So everybody was stockpiling it. The Germans got a sense that this was happening with the U.S. And so they sent the Luftwaffe to port in Italy called Bari, where there was a bunch of U.S. frigates. They bombed the crap out of them. And what they discovered was that, yeah, the frigates were loaded with mustard gas. A lot of the sailors and soldiers that were on the U.S. ships were exposed to mustard gas. Medical professionals took stock of what happened to them after they were exposed to the mustard gas. And it, and it showed, son of a gun, that one of the things that happened was their white cell counts reduced chromosome and the base pairs and there's billions of base pairs marching across 23 different chromosomes well as life goes by the stress of life comes rolling in you have ionizing radiation you've got free radicals you've got pollution crap in the air crap in the food crap in the water but most of all you have nutritional deficiencies all of which impact the structure of the dna itself it impacts the very structure of the DNA itself, causing mutations in the structure of the DNA. And it is the mutation of the chromosomal material generated by the stress of life, which is the focus of the study of epigenetics. So you experience ionizing radiation and a base pair gets damaged. You experience a lack of nutrition and another chromosomal base pair gets damaged. So now it's like you're trying to walk up a ladder that has broken rungs. And what's going to happen? You're going to fall off. They told us the chemotherapy was effective. They told us the chemotherapy was the only way to treat cancer. That cancer is genetic. There are genes that code for cancer. That's right. There are cancer-causing genes. You have a tumor because you have a bad gene. And the only thing you can do for it is chemotherapy. That's the only thing we know, chemotherapy and surgery. Even though in 2004, after 14 years of data collection in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, a study was published which proved that 97% of the time, chemotherapy for adult onset cancer does not work. I mean, isn't it supposed to be with the MDs? Research this and double blind that, and it's all about the science, boys and girls. Well, it's all about the science, except when the science goes against conventional thought or your share of the profits. Chemotherapy does not work. It's been proven and published. And yet it's rolled out tens of thousands of times a day all across the world. I wonder if money has anything to do with it. Let's take a look back at how we've fared while we've let the MDs drive the bus and what they've told us. First, they told us there's no such thing as germs and that washing your hands is heresy and that if you espouse washing your hands, you should be kicked out of the medical industry. Well, then they told us in order to heal the body, you need to swallow massive amounts of mercury and calomel. You needed to purge the body of evils. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, then you had to bleed out the bad humors from the body. This was the standard medical practice back in George Washington's day, espoused by conventional MDs, the biggest, brightest men of science of their time. No women allowed. Then all of a sudden they reversed and said, okay, there are microbes, we were wrong, but the only way you can deal with the microbe is with a man-made synthetic drug sold to you at a profit. That's the only way you can handle the microbe. So then they told us the chemotherapy was effective. They told us the chemotherapy was the only way to treat cancer. That cancer is genetic. There are genes that code for cancer. Medical professionals, MDs, in order to cover up their unbelievable lack of understanding and unbelievable track record.
Instead of blaming themselves, they blame you. They're unimpeachable. It's your problem. You have the bad gene. That's what you've got. Which is tantamount, really, to blaming tornadoes on sunlight. Well, how is that, Dr. G? Well, look, sunlight causes water to evaporate into clouds, and clouds cause tornadoes. Therefore, sunlight causes tornadoes. Well, you can make the argument that everything in the human body is coded for and determined by your chromosomes, but that's kind of a dodge. But that's what the MDs get away with. And because most people have no understanding of genetics. And honestly, when most people on the street hear the word chromosome, they like start to feel intellectually inferior and they want to get away from the conversation as quickly as possible. So all a doctor has to do to win an argument or a conversation with a patient is mention the word gene. And then the patient genuflects. Oh, doctor, you're so smart. One of my favorite quotes of Max Planck is a new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents die and a new generation grows up that's familiar with a new idea. Now a cryptic shorthand way of paraphrasing this is science progresses one funeral at a time. This is why conventional medicine, MD-directed allopathic reductionistic medicine, even though it is the leading cause of death in the United States, the leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States, even though the MDs have monopolized the medical marketplace for a hundred years, even though we have been under their care for a hundred years, and while we have been under their care, Alzheimer's, autism, arthritis, heart disease, cancer, uncured, unstoppable, escalating, obesity, escalating, even though we have unbelievably awful outcomes from the conventional medical system. It remains intact because the nature of the scientific mind is to be cowardly. The nature of the scientific mind is to cling to whatever it was that you were taught. Coronavirus, my main message here, fear not because numbers don't lie that there is nothing to fear about the coronavirus for most people. In the 2017 to 2018 flu season, the flu broke all kinds of records. This was just a couple of years ago. These numbers, of course, from the Centers for Disease Control. Influenza killed 80,000 people in that season, 80,000 people. That's a bit higher than in previous seasons, but nonetheless, it was high. Generally speaking, between 56, 60,000 people a year die from influenza in the United States of America. This particular season, 2017 to 2018, was really high with 80,000 people dead. It's a big number. If you crunch those numbers, the percentage was nearly 11%. The MDs are fantastic at trauma care and surgery when it's necessary and a handful of infectious diseases, not viral infections. The reason that people get sicker the older that they get is because they use MD-directed allopathic medicine for everything. An MD-directed allopathic medicine for chronic disease does not attempt to cure the chronic disease. It simply manages it with pharmaceuticals. Is it better to manage the heart disease with a drug than to die from it? Well, yes, it is. But as you you are under the influence of a pharmaceutical and MD-directed pharmaceutical centrist care, your body gets weaker and weaker. In direct contradistinction to this medical model stands the naturopathic community. Our patients don't get sicker the older that they get because when they come to us with asthma or high blood pressure or eczema or fibromyalgia or anxiety and panic attacks, the intention of the naturopathic therapeutic is to cure the, the illness. We attempt to cure the illness. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know who's pulling these strings. Dr. Fauci should be ashamed of himself. And other medical doctors who are, you know, forwarding this narrative. Oh, be afraid. Be very afraid. Stay at home. Lock down. We're all going to die. Should be ashamed of themselves. Now, this is one of the problems with conventional medicine from my point of view. Lots and lots of unrepentant hubris. Doctors never wrong, even when they're wrong. And that's a problem. So I'm calling right now on other medical professionals to stand up and and be counted. Ladies and gentlemen, if you survived the 2017 to 2018 flu, then the chances are strong that you're going to survive this because it was 10 times more virulent than this one is. And oh, by the way, if you would like to really cut through all of the internet nonsense, the, the nonsense on YouTube and Facebook about home remedies for viral infections, well, visit my website as frequently as you can, glidden.healthcare. Generally speaking, between 56, 60,000 people a year die from influenza in the United States of America. This particular season, 2017 to 2018, was really high with 80,000 people dead. It's a big number. If you crunch those numbers, the percentage was nearly 11%.
but that's high. 11% of people who got it died from it. That's pretty high, right? So two years ago, 80,000 people die and 11% mortality rate from the virus. Now let's compare this with what is going on now. These numbers straight from Johns Hopkins University in the United States of America as of March 20th, 2020, 16,638 people have been infected with coronavirus. Now, because the testing hasn't been rolled out efficiently, there may be many more people that have been infected with the coronavirus, right? Which is going to drive the survivorship numbers even higher, the death rates even lower. Life expectancy in Italy is 82 years of age. Life expectancy in China is 76 years of age. When you look at the numbers of the people that died in China, the people that died in Italy, it's mostly elderly with pre-existing health conditions. If you're not elderly, you probably don't need to worry about this. And this also begs the question, why weren't we worrying 10 times more two years ago? What is all the hubbub about now? Now, is it horrible if one person dies? Yeah. From an infectious illness, it is. However, in this culture, the older that you get, the sicker that you get. In the 20 first century, the older that you get, the sicker that you get. And why is that? Well, nobody's talking about that. The nature paths are talking about it. I've been talking about this for 12 years now in the public forum. In the United States, we don't have a free medical market. We haven't had a free medical market since uh, 1912. That's 108 years of monopolization of the medical marketplace by the pharmaceutical industry and the American Medical Association in the United States, the MDs. I think a lot of people are starting to smell this rat because the national medical emergency, right, the quarantines and the shutdown of the economy are simply not warranted. And inquiring minds would like to know what the heck is going on because numbers don't lie. In the 2017 to 2018 flu season, it broke all kinds of records. Normally between 50, 54,000 people a year die in the U.S. from the flu. Uh, by the way, are you okay with that? You know what that means? That means conventional medical doctors are piss poor at being able to treat the flu. So why aren't the naturopathic doctors, the licensed naturopathic doctors invited to the table. My profession is only licensed and regulated in 20 states in the United States. Does that mean that the laws of nature or science change when you cross the state line? No, it has everything to do with the monopolization of the medical marketplace. The pharmaceutical industry is in control. They don't want the naturopaths to have a say here because it's a turf war. The flu season of 2017 to 2018 killed 80,000 people, yielding an 11% death rate. It's a big number, bigger than 50 to 54, which is usual. New scientific ideas never spring from a communal body, however organized, but rather from the head of an individually inspired researcher who struggles with his problems in lonely thought and unites all his thought on one single point, which is his whole world for the moment, Max Planck. Now, can you think of any physician who has done this, who has labored like this, who fits this description? Well, guess what? I can. Dr. Joel Wallach, the founder of Longevity, is in fact considered one of the fathers, if not the very founder of the science of epigenetics. And the world owes Dr. Wallach a great big thank you, not only for this, but for many different things. Dr. Wallach is unrivaled in his understanding of the relationship between stress, the stress of life, and the pathogenesis of disease. A carbonated drink with a meal neutralizes stomach acid. The little fizzy bubbles, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide neutralizes stomach acid. When you're healthy, your stomach acid is so strong that if you chopped your finger off and swallowed it, your stomach would digest it down to the bone. Your body wants and needs to have strong stomach acid. But when you wash down lunch or dinner with a Coke or a Perrier or a beer or anything that's got bubbles in it, you're inhibiting digestion and you're gonna die, sucker. But you're gonna die slowly. So you want to have a carbonated drink, have it between meals, not with a meal. Why don't you know this? Because we don't have a free medical market? Because your medical doctor may be the nicest human being in the world, but they have no training, no respect, no appreciation, and no understanding of medical nutrition. Zero! Nutritional supplements are like wine. All wine is made from grapes. There's a great deal of difference between green apple wine and a nice California Pinot. Well, what's the difference? The recipe. I am here to tell you that in 25 years of clinical work, Dr. Wallach's nutritional supplements are more effective than anything I've ever used. And what it boils down to is science, recipe, and clinical effectiveness. Longevity on all three of those counts has a lot.
This stuff was formulated from $25 million of federally funded research, 26,000 autopsies, and 10 million blood chemistries and histopathology done by the founder of Longevity, Dr. Joel Wallach. It doesn't get any better than this. But the only way that you're going to have any understanding that I'm not blowing smoke is to try it and see for yourself. Because the proof of this pudding is definitely in the eating. We have been socialized to believe that our medical doctor has intelligence which is unimpeachable. That they know everything there is to know about everything having to do with medicine. When they got their MD, they got the secret decoder ring to everything. And so we believe every single thing that comes out of their mouth and we suffer because of it. Well, guess what? It's not genetics that's the cause of chronic disease. It's epigenetics, which is the cause of chronic disease. And epigenetics is the study of the relationship between stress and chromosomal health. How about that? There's lots of different types of stress. Mental stress, emotional stress, viral stress, bacterial stress, financial stress, political stress, weather, aging, crap in the air, crap in the food, crap in the water, right? Stress all everywhere all the time. Epigenetics is the study of how the stress of life negatively impacts the health and structure of our genetic material. We've got the chromosomes, we've got all these base pairs, and they're all connected to strands of sugar. Nothing can go wrong there. So when stress damages a part of the chromosome, something's gonna break. And when a chromosome gets damaged, it's gonna be a big bad voodoo daddy. Now, you know, there's ionizing radiation, there's oxidative damage, there's pollution, right? These are all things, but ostensibly, the research seems to say, seems to point in the direction that on a relative scale of things, as far as what mutates genes in real time for most people, nutrient deficiencies far outweigh any other stress. That nutrient deficiencies are of maximum importance, have maximum net negative effects on the health of the chromosome the structure, if you will, of the chromosome. Nutrient deficiencies are far more serious than radiation. They're far more serious than pollution. The naturopathic treatments strengthen the body. It doesn't weaken the body, it strengthens the body. I'm 61 years of age, I'm on zero prescription meds, and if you go to my website, I'm gonna post my recent blood work and the blood work that I had a year ago and the blood work that I had 30 years ago, and you can, you can look to see. It's because for the last 40, 50 years of my life, I have employed holistic medicine to help me when I'm sick, and you know, President Trump, I'm disappointed in President Trump because uh, at, in his original press conference of about a week ago, right, when he declared the national emergency, oh, we all have to come together as a country. Well, if that in point of fact is true, then why haven't the nature paths been invited to the task force? Why haven't the Ayurvedic doctors been invited to the task force? Why haven't the herbalists been invited to the task force? Naturopathic medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, these types of medicine are all licensed and regulated. So why haven't we been given a seat at the table because we don't have a free medical market. We're like the people years ago that said, hey, everybody, it's a good idea to purify the water, not to pee upstream and drink downstream. And we have to have a good public sanitation deal going on. We need clean water and we need a way to eliminate our waste so it doesn't hurt us. Just by doing those two things, historically, human life expectancy doubled. Well, the information that I'm talking about tonight, the information that Dr. Wallach's been talking about for 20 years, the information that Longevity Nation champions every day has this potential. I mean, think about it. Everybody all of the time is eating food that's hurting them. All of the time. And everybody's nutritional tank is running on fumes. So something breaks and you go to the allopathic MD who doesn't believe your body can fix itself. And what do they do? They throw a drug at it. And so we die slowly. Well, guess what? There's a new sheriff in town. There's a new way. And it's our way. The Human Genome Project sequenced all of the base pairs in all of the chromosomes. Completed in 2001. It took 11 years. So we have the human genetic code. But that's just about all that we know. We know the sequence. But most of what that means is meaningless to the scientific establishment in the world. One strand of DNA has hundreds of millions of base pairs. Area of chromosomes which are responsible for doing this that or the other thing are referred to as genes you would think that with two billion base pairs there should be hundreds of thousands of genes if not millions well the scientific community has only figured out about 19 to 21 thousand genes the scientific community isn't even tight on how many genes there are
And interestingly enough, you see all of this area between the known gene regions? All of this stuff? 97% of the genetic material. We have no idea what they do. So how are we going to support healthy chromosomes? by giving the body all of the nutrients that it needs to function optimally, eliminating the food that's hurting the body, getting out of the way and let the body go to work. Now, if you're in Longevity Nation, you already know how to do this. The 90 essential nutrients appropriate for our body weight. The many different packs that we use, depending on what your diagnosis is, what organ system of the body we are attempting to support and promote. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a call to action. Fire your medical doctor because they have nothing for you unless you have a broken bone or a bleeding artery. Have a bullet in your arm, heaven forbid. For chronic disease, they have nothing for you but old-fashioned, outdated therapeutics built upon the shifting sands of allopathic reductionism sold to you for profit. Leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States, MD-directed medicine. Why? Because what's the most expensive medicine? The one that doesn't work. Well, Dr. Wallach's got your back. I would lean on his clinical experience and give your body a fighting chance to make it into the undiscovered country of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition. All you have to do is look around and start asking simple questions. How many people do you know who have had cancer? How many are still alive? And if they are still alive, has it been more than five years? Because that seems to be the magic number. If they are still alive, what is the quality of their life like? Facts are a stubborn thing, and as it turns out, cancer treatment with allopathic reductionistic methods is a gigantic disaster. However, we are empathetic beings. We don't really know these distinctions between allopathic reductionism, what the MDs do, and naturopathic medicine, homeopathic medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, holistic medicine in general. And we've been socialized to believe that those nature pass and those chiropractors they're just back of the bus quacks with substandard training so we see these pictures of little children undergoing chemotherapy and all their hair falls out and adults bravely fighting cancer oh they're gonna beat cancer they're gonna fight cancer right well done red meat contains a carcinogenic substance called a heterocyclic amine and it will hurt you it's not present as much in rare red meat or meat that's stewed or put in soups or, or in a crock pot so so you want to have a steak, have it rare or medium rare. No grill marks because all that charred meat is heterocyclic amines and that will kill you. Nitrates added as preservatives to bacon, salami, sausage, turkey, deli ham converts into a carcinogenic substance called a nitrosamine, which causes cancer. Not a good idea. Now you want to have bacon, sausage, pepperoni? No problemo. Just make sure it doesn't have nitrates in it. The skins of baked potatoes, yams, and sweet potatoes. Huh? The crunchy skins, you know, when it's really yummy, that's also loaded with heterocyclic amines. It's death on a plate. You want to boil a potato? Be my guest. You can eat as much of that as you want because it's only the baking process that makes the chemical convert into a heterocyclic amine. Colon cancer, 93% of people who get colon cancer are dead after five years. Throat cancer, 100% are dead after five years. Non-small cell lung cancer, 96% dead. Kidney cancer, 92% dead. It means conventional cancer treatment doesn't work, period. And if you think it does work, there are a handful of childhood leukemias that it has been very promising in. And there are a handful of breast cancers, which if you get them before they spread and you hack the breast off, they don't come back because that particular cancer was very specific to the breast. And if you're okay with that type of treatment, well, that's kind of like thinking, well, if there was an outbreak of hand psoriasis, millions of people getting hand psoriasis, well, one treatment would be to cut your hand off. This is what we have become inured to. This is what we have become socialized to. For goodness sakes, ladies and gentlemen, it is as plain as the nose on your face, but you don't even have to really any understanding of statistics or the scientific method at all. We're holistic, which means we don't just slap and dab. We don't just medicate symptoms. We don't just sweep things under the rug. It's a two-step program. Step number one, nutrify your body. Fill up your tank. Appropriate for your body weight with the right stuff in the right recipe. Step number two, stop swallowing stuff that's hurting your body. There's a video, a free video on YouTube, circulating on YouTube called Against the Grain, which explains why wheat, barley, rye, and oats are like death on a plate. Why the gluten in wheat, barley, rye, and oats is one of the worst foods for the human body.
Long story short, wheat, barley, rye, and oats harm the small intestine. And the small intestine is the structure in the body, the organ in the body, whose job is to absorb nutrition into the bloodstream. It's not a good idea to damage that. But every time you eat a whole wheat sandwich or pasta, you're damaging your small intestinal tract. Who knew? By the way, who told you to eat that stuff? Care of the patient with COVID-19 is similar to that of other viral pneumonias, primarily consisting of supportive care and oxygen supplementation when needed. Corticosteroids have not been recommended. This means that conventional medicine, MD-directed, pharmaceutical centrist medicine has no treatment for the coronavirus or the effects thereof. All they can do is put people in the hospital, put them on oxygen, keep their fingers crossed, and hope that they don't die. And for more health information, make sure to check out our YouTube or our Instagram. And you can actually message us there on the Instagram account and we will respond to every message. Make sure to check out our food YouTube channel called Notice Foods. This is 100% Dr. Wallach approved. And the chef that is preparing the food here and teaching you how to follow Dr. Wallach's food guidelines and Dr. Glidden's food guidelines. He is an industry professional over 22 years experience and a college diploma to back it up. And we do have experienced cooks and bakers as well working on content for the YouTube channel Notice Foods and the Instagram channel Notice Foods. It's 100% gluten free, oil free, all the stuff about burning fats and all of the rules that, that you would need to know or follow. We're here to teach it to you here as well as give you tons of ideas for recipes, individual dishes and meals. Of course, in the near future, we do have a cookbook coming out. Stay tuned for it. And definitely check out my newest book, Fake Diseases. It covers all of the major topics that come up, like birth defects, blood sugar problems, bone and joint problems, cancer, autoimmune problems, and more. And it's on Amazon for just $9.99. And the audiobook read-along version is free here on YouTube. And the link for that is in the description of this video.